Hello. Welcome back, sir. Is, uh, is there any chance this is the retirement fight? The people of Las Vegas are a lot better than the people of uh, Kansas City. Uh, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, crazy fight last time out, right? I mean, talk to me about your thoughts on that. I mean, uh, a, a great battle. You pulled it out after some difficulties. Are, are, are you proud of being known for those battles, or do you want to avoid those moving forward? I mean, that's what gets people paid. That's what pits, that's what put butts in seats. I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's why I'm here. Right? Yeah. Um, it was seven minutes. I don't know if there's been another fight of the night that was that short. So I'm happy with my performance. I thought I was in control. Yeah, he landed some stuff, but I, you know, I felt in control the whole time. Honestly, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it was a cool finish, cool celebration, everything. That's what I wonder about, because I, I know you guys want to go in there as clean as possible, right? But we remember the battles. We remember the wars like yeah. that, you know what I mean? So do you get proud of it, or do you go back and the team is like, what the hell are you doing? Don't get involved in a fight like that. Not really. I mean, it's it was sick. It was just like, yeah, they're my team, but they're also fans of the sport, too. And it was an entertaining fight. I mean, you can't, you can't go to the pool and not get wet, right? You're going to get hit. It's a fight. But... <laughs> Do good, do some good stuff out there, and you know, make your name for yourself. And those are just memories at this point. I mean, that that's a fond memory myself and him too. TJ can go back and look at that fight, and it was a fun fight. He made some money, so it's something we're both gonna be proud of until you know, until the grave. Very nice. The post fight, uh, how well was it received? Did you get some hate? Did you get some love? How did it go? Uh, no, I mean, mostly mostly love. There was some hate. Some guys taking it seriously and stuff. But you know, that's that's what we're here to do is you know, move the needle a little bit. But all right, well, you get matched up now with Alexander Hernandez, a guy that's uh, a little bit different personality than you, I would say. Uh, what, yeah. do, what do you think about him, I guess, as a person, as a fighter? Have you, have you run across him yet? Any interaction? I just met him uh, this morning. We were both, like, looking starving, waiting for our uh, our meals from the uh, the nutrition guys here. Uh, I've shook his hand and said, what's up? You know, it's cool. But, yeah, he's definitely more stoic, more, you know, reserved, that kind of stuff. But that, that's fine. It doesn't mean anything. He fights the same way, and uh, I fight my way. So we'll see which way's better. So what do you think about his style overall? Uh, it's explosive, for sure. He's a good athlete. Um, he utilizes everything. He does everything well. It's just uh, he tends to fold. He tends to tends to break a little bit, and I tend not to. All right. So last thing for me, uh, I know you said you're going bonus hunting. Uh, is, is bonus? Can that be another fight of the night or a performance of the night? The preference this time around. I'll take either. Both would be ideal. But uh, yeah, no. As long as I get one. You know, I got some uh, some furniture to buy. I got a new house coming, so I got some expenses coming my way. I got another kid on the way, too, at the end of January. So, yeah, those bills are going to rack up. So uh, I'll take whatever I can get. So, but thank you uh, for taking the time. You mentioned meals this morning and such. Were you here in Vegas a while? Did you get to use the PI? How was camp? No, I, I only come when they uh, they ship me out of here, like two or three days beforehand. So I don't have – I have yet to uh, use the luxuries at the PI, really, other than just – when we're cutting weight and that kind of stuff. But I want to, you know, it's a fantastic facility. But uh, now I just came here Tuesday. I'm gonna leave Sunday or Monday, just like, a, just, you know, it's a regular business trip for me. Excellent, and how was camp for this? Uh, you know, getting ready for a guy who's gonna, you know, be in your face, come forward. You guys open up the main card, that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah no, camp was great. Um, we got some young studs. I own a gym in King of Prussia, and we got some young studs that uh, we're training with, man. They're helping push me, they're helping, uh, I was talking about this with my coach over here too, Coach Dill, and uh, you know, help just revitalize the camp a little bit. You get that young testosterone, you get them young, them young stud athletes coming in and, and beating me in races, and it's like, I gotta get them, you know what I mean? So, um, no, it's it's been good, and winning and and doing my dream and fighting the UFC, it's attracting other young athletes to to pursue their dreams. And uh, yeah, I mean, all what is it? High tide rides is all boats, man. We're 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 all eating and and training and and watch the fights together, and it's been good. I'm sure that really gets the juices flowing, and being like a young vet, if you will, do you see these guys and you think, like, man, I was, I was you once. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I was definitely, you know, remember being that, that, that young athlete and, you know, fearless and that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, man, they're so lucky, in my opinion, just because this, this stuff wasn't around when I was 19. You know, it was somewhat illegal. I mean, it was illegal in certain states, and, um, man, there was – there was like maybe a black belt in one city, you know, and now there's a black belt every city, <laughs> you know, multiple black belts. I mean, and now you have multiple, you know, gyms with credited guys who've been in the game. Like, it's just so prevalent, and uh, it's just due to the UFC's popularity. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm jealous of these young guys coming up. And, but I'm sure they're jealous of you that you've been in it, done it. Uh, how cool is it that you can kind of like, you know, be the teacher? And they're your students, yeah. like, and you know they can soak up game from you. It's it's fulfilling, honestly. I mean, you help others achieve their dreams. That's that's 
one way for true happiness, right? Is helping others fulfill their dreams as opposed to you just being selfish all the time. So, I mean, that's going to be the, that's the game plan for when I'm done fighting is, okay, now I'm coaching. I've got, you know, the credibility, obviously. So now it's just, uh, you know, help them achieve what they want to achieve. And I know how to do it. I know my way might, my way might not be their way, but I'm going to maximize their tools and their potential and, you know, get them where they need to be. That's awesome, man. And last for me, uh, you said a baby in January. What do you got? Yes, another boy. Yeah, maker of men. Right on, man. Congrats and good luck on Saturday. Hey, thank you. Uh, you expressed your interest to fight on that potential sphere card. Yes. Um, you guys are on the ball, man. <laughs> but I'm pumped. Awesome. And <laughs> uh, yeah. Good one, good one. But uh, why should Dane and the team place you on that card? If Senior Perfecto, man, on Mexican Independence Day. Like, who else? Obviously, you guys have a ton of fantastic Mexican fighters. I'm being, I'm kidding. But uh, I would love to. I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about that $2.3 million or billion dollar sphere uh, ball, right? And uh, it just looks cool. I saw all the videos you guys did with the U2 concert there. And yeah, I'm jealous of anybody who gets on that card. I'm jealous of the guys who get to fight next week at Madison Square Garden. Like I want to fight, you know, wherever. I mean, Apex is great, but I want to spread my wings a little bit too. Awesome, hopefully they give you, you grant your wish. Yeah, I hope so, man. Hey, Bill, right here. You had mentioned earlier that you were talking about being that advocate of being a veteran now. How has some of that translated from being a father? Like, what did you learn from being a father, and how has that translated over to being a vet? Uh, sleep is a necessity. Uh, um, I'm extremely lucky to have a good partner, good support system. Obviously, support system's everything. Um, but it also just prioritizes, like, okay, like, I'm not just making money now. It's like, no, I'm, I'm helping build a future for my kids, uh, whether that's with money, but also your legacy, your, your views, your audience, how you conduct yourself. Um, it's all wrapped up in the one. I mean, people tell you, like, how it is, and, oh, man, things change. And you're like, what are you talking about? But you, you realize it when you're in it. You don't know what to expect. You don't know what you're in for until, until you're in it. And then, man, just everything does change. Good luck Saturday. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. All good? All right, gentlemen and lady.
Okay, I know you had the, uh, the big win back in May, the big knockout, I guess. Just how important was it for you to get that result and just get back in the win column? Uh, it was real important to me uh, to get back in the win column and uh, get the finish that I was looking for. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm trying to reestablish that by getting another one this Saturday. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting because you had a five-month break before that fight, a five-month into this one. I'm wondering if that's actually maybe better. Like, are you finding that to be better? Because you had such a busy last year, but you ended up with a couple setbacks. Nah, man, we be trying to clock in for real, for real. Um, as long as I'm ready, though, that's that's the biggest thing. You know, they, they called me for the JDM fight uh, back when, you know, he had fought uh, at the Apex. And uh, I felt like, you know, it was too much of a short time to fight somebody at that, you know, level. So I was just like, hey, let's make it for September, uh, not September. Yeah, September, you know what I'm saying? Uh, August and uh, out in Sydney. And when we wasn't able to, you know, make that happen, he had that fight with Kevin Holland, which is whatever. It was a dope fight between both of them. But I really wanted to have that fight, you know, that time. But I really wanted to just make sure that I was prepared and I was ready for anybody that I get into the cage with. But I'm always trying to get out there and fight at the end of the day. Is it you know. tough as a fighter to, to kind of take that mature approach to your career? Because I know as a fighter, you're just going to be like, yeah, I'll fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. But that's not really necessarily the smart way to manage a career at the highest level. No, not at all. But like I said, though, as long as you have the preparation and you prepare for any opportunity, then you should take it, you know. But if you're not ready, then, yeah, it's not going to be the smartest idea whatsoever. Uh, back at 170, I mean, is this is this the future for sure? Have you found it to be difficult? Has it been lifestyle changes? What's it been for you? Uh, it's been good, bro. Been a, a whole lifestyle change. You know, me being able to eat clean and eat better uh, for myself, uh, bro. We we ripped up right now. You know, I actually want to take off the shirt. Matter of fact, fuck that, man. I'm gonna show the world, bro. <laughs> what we doing? You know. But, you know, I'm just flexed out here, you know, and I feel like all the work I've been putting in and the preparation that I have done, you know, it, it shows in not just my, my fight, but my, my physique. When I step on the scale, everybody sees all the hard work that I have put in, you know, so I'm definitely going to have a good time. Is that a daily sacrifice for you, man, or is it like a lifestyle that you're enjoying? I'm enjoying it. So it's not really even a sacrifice, you know, uh, being able to change, you know, what I was eating and everything I was doing. It, it has put me in a better position where I can sleep better. I can think more clearly. And I'm just able to, you know, go out there and, and fight at a, you know, higher level and at a better performance, you know, for myself. Instead of just feeling like, you know, I got to end the fight early, you know, just in case I hope I don't gas out. Now, I just want to be able to fight 15 minutes all the way out, you know, and just show everybody, man, I can just keep going and keep going. Talk about the matchup here you have with Alex Morono, a guy that's been around for a while, kind of a gritty veteran. Uh, what do you think about him as an opponent? Uh, I think he's cool. You know, uh, he got a couple decent wins within the organization. He's done, you know, enough to stay in the organization. Uh, so my biggest thing is just showing that his levels to this game. Even though he's the vet and he's been around for a minute, I just want to show him that, hey, at the end of the day, bro, it's a whole different ball game when you're fighting a person like me, definitely at this level, and that, you know, uh, pretty much going to get Alex out of there, you know, as soon as I step into that cage. You know? Did I read correctly that you're doing an open workout later today? Yeah, man, I'm doing an open workout at Fight Capital. Yeah, at uh, Fight Capital. I didn't pretty much do a lot of promoting uh, for it, which is crazy. I feel like this is not even a, a fight week for me. It doesn't even feel like a fight week. I think everything that happened just like this, you know, uh, just even seeing the UFC post about it, you know, it just happened so quick. So I still haven't felt like no type of nerves, no type of feeling of whatever, you know, so I really got to focus and get my mind right. But yeah, I'm doing an open workout at Fight Capital. Very nice. Last yeah. thing for me, uh, pick up another big win here. Uh, try to squeeze something in before the end of the year? Do you do you start looking towards next year? What's the plans with the win here? Uh, I mean, it all depends on the USC and what they're trying to do. But, yeah, I would love to get another one, you know, depending on how this fight go, which I think it's going to go my way. Uh, definitely trying to squeeze in one more, probably in December. Mm. Hey, Joaquin, <clears throat> what do you think of Sean Strickland's title win? I think it was dope, you know. Uh, <laughs> the champ that we needed right now, you hear me? <laughs> And, uh, you know, Sean is definitely shaking up the game, you know, just with his personality alone. Uh, but it shows you as well, you know, mm, it's all mental, you know. It's all mentality. 
Didn't nobody have Sean pick the win, obviously, you know, with Israel Adesanya being a very dominant, you know, middleweight champion. Uh, but Sean was like, fuck that, you know, went over there in Australia, had the mentality that he was like, hey, bro, I'm going to, you know, live or die on this, you know, because he walked down Izzy the whole time. And when Izzy just didn't have any type of answer for him, you know, he realized, bro, he's like, bro, I'm about to take this man belt, period. So that actually gives me a lot of motivation myself that I can do the same thing at 170 right now. So, yeah, shout out to Sean, new champ. Obviously, you got some work in at Extreme Couture in the past. Like, was it just cool seeing him get that belt after training with him? Yeah, but like I said, bro, it just shows and um, it gives a lot of people motivation when you're able to be surrounded by people like that, you know. I just trained with a world champion, you know, even with uh, uh, Jamal, you know, when I was with him. It's just when you surround yourself with people that have that presence, it's just like, all right, I can do the same thing. I can be involved and get myself in the same spot if necessary. The Walter Division finally got that, that championship fight booked. How do you see that fight going between Leon Edwards and Colby Covington? Oh, it just got booked? I don't know, bro. To be honest with you, it don't make any sense to me. Uh, to put some respect on his name, you know, uh, Bilal Muhammad should definitely, you know, been fighting for the for the belt, you know. Uh, Kobe Covington, uh, be honest with you, I can't even remember the last fight he had. I really can't remember, like, who did he fight last? I'm going to ask y'all a question. Who did he fight last? I can't remember. So regardless of that, uh, I feel like Bilal Muhammad should have definitely been uh, up next to fight for the belt. So I don't really know how that Leon and Kobe Covington fight goes, uh, but I, I'd rather have seen Bilal fight for that title. Awesome. Thanks, man. Joaquin, anyone that knows about you or follows you knows how adamant you are about fighting Jack Della Maddalena. Have you two had any discussion? Nah, man, be honest with you, bro. And now we finna turn up because thank you, bro, because you asked a, a good question. These dudes don't want to promote the fight. And be honest with you, I wanted to promote this whole time with Alex, but he gave me nothing. He ain't got no personality. He ain't got no character. And I feel like a lot of these fighters, man, when they come out here, they get mad because, oh, man, you know, uh, they not showing me doing this. They not showing my highlights. But what are you doing to promote the fight? And I feel like I've been doing it, like, so often with, you know, whether it's the Chris Curtis fight, whether it's the Nasser Dean fight, whether it's Albert Durayev. I put in so much promotion, but these other fighters don't give me nothing back, which make me not even want to do it, you know? Because it's just like, what, what's the point if the other person uh, in front of me doesn't want to try to help sell this fight, too? Because we trying to get everybody to watch this. We on a Grant Dawson and Bobby Green, no disrespect to them card, but how many people come to see that main event? Just to even watch it. They only gonna watch it because it's the UFC, bro, and people just used to it, you know? But what are these fighters doing to help promote? So JDM, I'm really not tripping off of him, you know? Because he's not the type of fighter to try to promote himself and put himself in a bigger position. That's it. So another guy in the division that you think would match your energy in terms of that type of flow? Kevin Holland, all day. Kevin Holland would definitely match my flow with that, you know? But it's not a lot of fighters that's willing to promote themselves because in my, Honest opinion, they don't really believe in themselves, truthfully. Fair enough. And I was just curious for my last one. Um, two of your former opponents, Nasser Dean Imovov and Chris Curtis, fought each other not too long ago and ended in a no, no contest. What did you make of that fight? Uh, I mean, it wasn't much to make of it, to be honest with you. You know, Nasser Dean did a stupid thing. I think he either, what, poked him in the eye or headbutt, you know. Uh, so, you know, that was his fault, you know. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't have much thoughts on that fight, though. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. Um, yeah. Let me sort of go back to what you're talking about with Hedo. Let's just say in a perfect world, you could send out a, a press thing type of release or, or speak to the people watching this later. How would you like somebody to help you promote a fight? What's the guideline? What you want them to do? With, with the fighter? Yeah, with anybody. Just, what, my biggest thing, well, anybody just repost and just pay attention. But as a fighter, as another, you know, um, athlete, you know, at the end of the day, we work together. We all helping each other. Even though we go in there and we fight each other and we try to, you know, embarrass each other, whatever, knock each other out, at the end of the day, bro, we getting paid with one another. So let's try to get as much money as we can. And the thing is, that's how we get money is by people viewing us, you know. So my biggest thing is to my opponents, my future opponent, to this opponent, is, bro, talk that shit you be talking in the cage or in the, uh, with your coach in the gym, but talking on media. Post about it. You talk about you believe in yourself and what you've been doing, speak about it. And that's how you promote it, you know? And we're going to see about who's, you know, telling the truth at the end of the day. 
And you'd figure with people having the platforms now that are just didn't exist before. It'd be easy work. It'd be crazy. It'd them. be easy work. And people want to get mad at Jake Paul or Logan Paul and doing what they're doing. And yeah, they goofs. They goofballs. I ain't going to lie. But they talk about it and they promote, promote themselves very well. And I feel like every fighter can learn, learn from that and put themselves in a way better position. I mean, the fact that we just brought them up says they're doing something right. Exactly. We were talking to John about feeling good and in preparation, the weight, everything. So obviously you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. Yeah. How good is it to just be dialed in? Are you even telling some teammates, like, man, you got to come eat right like I do. You got to kind of, like, follow my blueprint because I got it figured out. Uh, Well, to be honest with you, it's not a blueprint to this. You know, it's it's whatever you feel that matches your um your body type, you know, what you eat, because what I'm eating might not work for the next individual. They might not be able to cut the weight the same, you know, so everybody's different. It's the science behind it, but it takes time and patience, whatever, to really figure out what works best for you, definitely when you're trying to make a weight cut. At the end of the day, what we're doing is not natural. We're depleting our bodies at the end of the day. I'm still depleting myself, you know, to get to where I'm at. Um, so with all that being said, you have to figure out what best, uh, what works best for you at the end of the day. What is the, if I can ask, what is your diet like? Vegan? What is that? What's? Oh no, that's not vegan. Uh, so my biggest thing is, uh, I don't eat any red meat. Don't eat no steak, anything of that nature. I feel like it, because at the time when I was eating that, when I was at 185, it was hard to burn. You know, at the end of the day, so I removed that and I only have uh, salmon, uh, fish. Uh, as well as uh, chicken. Chicken is my primarily like protein that I have. And uh, other than that, all my greens, what is, you know, avocado, spinach, you know, uh, Brussels sprouts, bro, you know, asparagus, whatever, anything green, bro, I'm eating it. And, uh, but it's nothing crazy. Like, it's nothing like to the point where it's a keto diet or it's a whatever. It's like my biggest thing is whatever makes you feel comfortable and makes you feel good and to be able to cut that weight. So I eat a lot of fruit, you know, to rehydrate myself, you know, instead of just drinking Gatorade or drinking um, Prime or whatever. <laughs> you know, I eat a lot of watermelon, kiwis, strawberries and stuff like that to help rehydrate my body. A lot of melons and everything of that, of that nature. Uh, but, you know, like I said, you got to find out what works for you at the end of the day. That's awesome, man. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. I mean, yeah. if I could follow those steps, I might take my shirt off in the middle of the day, too. Yeah, yeah, no, most of them, man. Like I said, bro, I, I, I work too hard, you know, to, to not show it off. Uh, my biggest thing is, you know, everybody want to think this stuff just comes out of nowhere, man. I've been working like this for a good two years, you know, for, for me, like, to get to where I'm at right now, a good two years with the camp that I'm with now, with my team, Mercy Lago, with Justin Hardick, Nick Simmons, that's my team, and uh, you know we worked real hard to put me in position, man, to show the world that I'm going to be the greatest welterweight fighter of all time. That's what's up. And last for me, with your opponent, you mentioned 15 minutes. I know Alex can give you that 15 minutes. When you got that contract or your manager were talking, what was the reaction like? Oh, okay, like this is we can match up good with Morono. Uh, I, I don't really concern myself with my opponents no more. Like it's not a competition to me, right? It's just. As long as I got somebody to, you know, step in the cage with, bro, we got a dance going on. So it doesn't matter if it was Alex Morono, it doesn't matter if it was JDM, don't matter if it was Kevin Holland, it don't matter who it is, as long as I got somebody to fight, we good to go. Excellent. Well, yes, good luck on Saturday. Can't wait to see it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Rick, obviously not the not the result you wanted last time out, but uh, you know, I wonder at this point in your career, I mean, are, are there lessons for that, or is it just like, hey, this is this is the game we play? Yeah, for sure, definitely not the uh, outcome I was looking forward to, and you know, going back to the drawing board, and it's it's the game we play, and you know, we come out here, roll the dice in that octagon, and control the things I control, and it it didn't go my way, and you know, sucked sucked pretty bad, but I'm looking for some redemption on that one. I like it. Is it hard sometimes because it's the weirdest sport, right? Like you can have the best preparation in the world and just you zig when you should have zag or whatever, and it's over. You know that's it. So when you look at it, do you do you like oh we got to break down every frame and figure out what it was, or do you just go well sometimes you get caught here if you step in as many times as you have? Yeah, for sure. Usually it's the first person to make the mistake, and I hesitated at throwing a punch that I shouldn't have thrown, and um, I got caught in that middle ground. He he caught me, and uh, you know the ref called it. Uh, talk to me about what you've been focused on since. I like to check social media, see what you guys are up to. It just seems like you've been doing a lot of hiking as far as if I look at your social media. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm out in the mountains as much as I can uh, in Iowa with my family, spend a lot of time with my boy. He's two and a half, um, you know, training my, training my ass off and uh, just putting the work in, putting the work in for it. Yeah, you made some training changes as well? I did, yeah. I, I reconnected with Eric Koch. Uh, <laughs> he looks like a light heavyweight right now. He's, <laughs> he's bulked up quite a bit. But we're old training partners since, like, 2011. Trained in Milwaukee a bunch. We're both in Iowa. He's he's my head coach, and he's he's, he's running a good uh, fight team in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I got Ben Askren coming out in my corner and still training with my grappling coach in Des Moines as well. Very cool. What was the motivation behind that? Was it just to change things up or geographic thing, or what was the, the, the decision? I, yeah, I've been meaning to reconnect with them sooner, and it's just, uh, you know, it didn't work out, and so I needed to change things up. He actually prepared to fight uh, Dober three different times as well, so and that helped. And uh, we just we kept it real simple for this camp too. Been, you know, training my butt off, of course, and uh, controlling everything I can control and putting in the work and just keeping it simple. That's awesome. All right. So, what do you think about Drew as an opponent? And kind of what he what he offers you. He, he's a big name. You know, he's been around for a while. I actually fought on the same card he made his pro debut on back in 2008 in Omaha, Nebraska. And I've, I've kind of had my eye on him since 2008, you know, quite a while. Uh, you know, he's beat some big names. I know this is a big opportunity. I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, taking a hold and, and seizing the moment and, and leveling up, leveling up big time in my career. That's awesome. So you actually remember that, like him from 2008? Yeah, because it's one thing to like look back on a card or whatever and be like, oh, look at look at who was on the prelims. But you actually remember identifying him and saying, that's a dude I'm going to fight at some point. Yeah, he he was impressive. He won. Um, you know, he was you know had the kickboxing background and um, you know had a big following even back then. And I just I had that feeling, you know, that we'd meet someday. And here we are. That's awesome. Uh, last thing for me, I guess you know you kind of touched on I guess leveling up. I mean, the goal here, you know as many fights as you are in your career, is it just go pick up another win? Or are there still like little things you have to check off? Like, I want to accomplish this in this fight. I want to make sure this happens in this fight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, keep it simple. You know, the more the more game planning we do, the more complicated things get. We kept it simple. The big thing is not hesitate. Don't get stuck in that middle ground with them. And, you know, no, no firefighting with this guy. You know, he, he wants to get you know, he wants to get hooking and banging and push guys up against the cage, and he's had a lot of success with that. You know, most of his UFC career. So it's like, if it's not if it's not broke, don't fix it, kind of thing. He's been he's had a lot of success with what he's done. And I know it's a it's a dangerous fight. He's he's got a lot of power. So I, you know, I'm gonna be on my p's and q's and stay sharp with him. I mean, thanks for taking the time. Kind of like a two part question. Uh, it's great to be able to like you know have that mind of Askren, former champion, and Eric. What do you get from each? Like the kickboxing, obviously striking must be off the hook when you guys game plan, and then obviously the with Ben, incredible wrestling. Yeah, both of them, uh, you know, incredible, incredible fighters, friends. Um, we spent a lot of time training together over the years. Um, you know, with all your training partners, you know, you, you see these guys, seeing these guys more than most of my family for the past 20 years. Um, so we sp spent a lot of time in the mats and both of them, you know, have been there, done that. Um, you know, especially with Ben, he's just so nonchalant. It's like, 
you know, this is what we come out to do. Yeah, you know, we put the work in. I'm just get in there, make it happen. It's kind of like, ah, you know, whatever kind of thing. And and Eric, you know, it's, he's really good with the little the little details and and knowing what works good for me, not trying to change change my style up too much. And 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 they see things different too. It's just the. You know that's where um, a lot of these mega gyms are, are having a lot of success too, because these a lot of guys have been in it for so long. They they just see things differently. If you're training at a smaller gym that you don't have guys that have been there, um, you know they see things they see things different. You know my last fight, for instance, I knew his number one punch was going to be his his left hook. And after the fight, he in his one of his interviews he said his coaches were calling for the le they said the left hook's going to be the punch and. That was the punch that he he dropped me with. This is just it comes down just to one punch sometimes, or or certain movement, or you know your head movement, things, little details. It has to be awesome to have just all that experience, you guys together. You can't teach that, you know. Um, you mentioned the two-year-old, yep. and you know, oh, you know, I'm teaching him this, teaching him that. But how great is it to be able to just have him help you just disconnect from all of this and teach you a couple things and help you reset when you need to. It's it's amazing, man. There's no other feeling like it, and anyone that's a father, you know, parent it, it can contest to it. Like, it just gives you a, a little more motivation, something more to fight for, um, better my not only better my life, better his life, his future, you know, set his future up a little better, and it's uh, you know, it's fun playing around with him doing jujitsu. He'll say jujitsu, come at me, want to take me down, and I'll pick him up and play around with him a little bit. And, uh, you know, he watches me work out. He's he's on the mats with me sometimes. It's, you know, it's it's really fulfilling having a child now. That's, hey, never too soon to learn how to pull guard, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully not pull guard. <laughs> no pulling guard in my house. <laughs> and last for me, I, I'm sure you guys know this. It's it's obvious, um, and it's I'm sure it's easier said than done. But how do you not get caught up in a Drew Dober fight? Because he is definitely able to like bring you in turn it into his type of bout. And the guy main eventing Saturday, he was able to get him out of there just by being, making it a Dober fight. How do you guys stop that from happening? Yeah, I actually ran into Bobby Green, fought him, if that's who you're, yeah. you're mentioning. And, uh, you know, he was piecing him up real good. And he got stuck up against the cage, got caught in that middle ground, you know, head, head and center line. Uh, you know, I don't want to I don't want to get pushed up against the cage, and I'm not going to let him – um, you know, reel me into his style of fight, which is, you know, up against the cage, middle ground, and just, you know, wailing away. All right, man, excellent. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ricky, to your right, right here. Um, I just wanted to jump off what Mondo said. Some fighters uh, I've talked to have mentioned that they don't want their kids to go into MMA because of the struggle that they face. Of course, they want their kids to be able to protect themselves. For you, where do you fall on line on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle with it, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to encourage him to fight. Maybe he'll want to wrestle or compete in jiu-jitsu or something. But when it comes to, the, you know, the striking and stuff, if he absolutely wanted to fight, you know, I, I'd help guide him, but run him through the ringer and see if see if he really wanted to do it and see what he had and, and really kind of put it to him and, and kind of test him that way. Then, then we'd know for sure. You know, a lot of guys say, it, yeah, I want to fight. You know, I'll have – People come up at a little local show and, oh, hey, I want to fight. Okay, well, come in the gym. And then a lot of times you don't see them, you know, or there's some that do, and then they kind of dip in and out. It's the consistency over the years. There's so much that goes into it. If you really want to make it in this sport, you got to dedicate your life to it. It's not, it's not a game you want to take lightly. You know, you obviously you can get knocked out or hurt. You, you have the injuries with, with just the training alone. Just getting here alone is harder than what most people realize. You know, I, I've had a lot of injuries in the past, you know, the financial stuff, you know, your your support system, your family, your training partners, your friends, the coaches, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this that most people don't realize. Um, you had mentioned earlier about how having your son for the last two and a half years now has bettered your life, it's bettering his life. and. When you reflect on that for the last two years, obviously it's been another motivating factor. But specifically, how has that translated of being a father uh, translated into the octagon for you? Ooh. Um, well, I can tell you, I mean, obviously it just motivates me more. I have, you know, uh, another mouth to feed. And, uh, eh, man, it just it makes me uh, – 
I got to be a little smarter with my training stuff too, especially like just getting here, like I was saying, um, my training, if I get injured and, and, you know, can't pick them up for a couple months, like that puts things into perspective where I need to be uh, more mindful of reading my body when I need to back off of certain stuff, work around certain things. So it just helps put things into perspective, I guess. Makes me makes me kind of trim off the fat in my life and, and see where, you know, maybe I don't hang out with this person or, or we're just a little better with our time because we have a child and, you know, he goes so fast. He's two and a half already. It seems like just yesterday he was born and now he's, you know, he's running around on his bike and wanting to do jujitsu with me and stuff. That's awesome. Thank you for your time. Good luck Saturday. Thank you.
since we have this here, are you guys gonna tell them to sponsor me too? I need some money too. <laughs> well, you guys tell them for me, not me tell them. <laughs> we'll pass it on. Tell them right now. <laughs> That's it. Rez, I know you were supposed to, supposed to fight earlier this year, like a rescheduling, then a cancellation. I guess, what, what happened with all that, and what was that like for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys know these sports. It's like uh, you start camp, injuries, stuff happen, and it was one of, uh, it was a bad one, so I had to take time off to heal and everything, yeah, so. Nice. I was going to ask, it's frustrating, but I know you've had some trials and tribulations in your life. I guess at this point, do things like that, like, just don't even bother you anymore? Nah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Those, those kind of stuff, no. I feel like I've gotten so strong mentally, you know. Um, I've always, I was always strong mentally because of the African side of me. It's like you have to grind for everything you got. You have to, like, yeah, it sucked, right? So I, I had different type of mentality, right? The African head strong. But I feel like there was a lot of different mental game that I could have added to that besides just being, you know? And I feel like now I'm there. I think maybe because I'm getting old too, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it. You know, it's funny because we were looking out here and we saw you and Joe Pfeiffer but meeting across. Yes. We, we kind of thought, uh-oh, is this going to be a problem right here? Yeah, if, if he was Buckley, I would have smacked the shit out of him. But, you know, he, he's, he's very nice, you know? He, um, you know, it's hard to be, to be like, Eesh. When I saw him, I want to be, but you know, he's, he's very nice, so it's hard for you to be. But on Saturday, it's going to be a whole different. He's not going to see that nice guy he just saw. Definitely not. So. Is that like a maturing process of you? Like, it, like a few years ago, would it have not have been? Oh, hey, hey, yes. A few years ago, I, you never see me talk to somebody. Hell no. Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go smack the shit out of you. I don't want you to come talk to me, you know, when I'm trying to, you know. But I think it's part of maturity, you know. I know when to calm down, and I know when I'm supposed to pick it up, you know? And also, if you guys watch most of my fight, I always go in the berserk, <laughs> let's go. Now, you, you fuck them up slow, <laughs> yes. yes. I like that. Uh, you say he's a nice guy, but uh, let's talk about the opponent. Like, it's different on Saturday night. Yes. What do you think about him? I mean, a hard hitter, right? Mm -hmm. He's got a little bit of hype behind him. Yes. What do you think about him as a fighter? Yeah, he's a, I think he's a good fighter. I would never talk down on it. In the UFC, there's no easy fights. You cannot be like, you know, but there's levels to this. Okay, I'm trying to say, I know he's good, but he's never faced anybody like me. He's never faced anybody. He's going to stand there and he's going to realize this is the fucking son of Al Hassan Garba. You do not fuck with Al Hassan Garba. That's for sure. I love it. It feels like, uh, man, this new sharpness, this new focus that maybe you haven't had before. Is this like a new chapter in your career? That's what I think, but I'm just getting older shit. I think that's why. I know I look sexy, but you know, I'm still 38 years old. You know, and I think it's just like uh, getting older and learning how to like channel stuff, you know, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving my new self and how things are going. And this division is just going to cry, I bet you. They're going to cry. That's awesome. Yeah. Last thing for me, uh, I know you've been sharing a lot about Ghana and about Africa. I know there's still some things to happen, but if this UFC Africa fight card happens, I imagine you got to be on there. Oh, you're damn right. They better put me on there. Is this, are they trying to make one? They are. They are? Well, they're talking about it. Oh, I, I hope they do. That's, that's home, man. And I want them to feel the African energy. Like when, when there's sports, that the energy is just different. The arena is just different. I cannot wait. I hope they do it so I can be one of those. Hey man, you know, uh, I was going to ask you if your maturity had sort of calmed it down, but it sounds like you're still not a big fan of Buckley. <laughs> you, <can laughs> you, you guys know that guy's a fucking bitch, right? Seriously, I'm not, this is, this is yeah, 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 that's guy. And also everything he does now is just for fucking clout. He just went to, like, he see you, you know. He, but he's a cool dude. And, you know, when, one thing I realized, he arced hard for the camera, right? But when he's in the back, he's all nice, you know? And the reason why I didn't, I don't give crap about him right now is because one, Joe is the priority right now. I cannot be putting my anger on somebody else when I know there's somebody else standing in front of me. One for the future though, maybe. No, for the future, yeah. You guys will see me smack him, I hope, I hope he comes back. You know, I'm getting old. I don't want to go back to 70, right? But I really hope he comes up back to 80 
man, and if that fight happened, I promise you guys, most of the fight is going to be just my palm open, just smacking the shit out of him the whole fucking fight. Thank you. So. Over here. Obviously, you focus on Joe Pfeiffer, but um, a fight with Bruno Ferreira hasn't been uh, able to materialize quite yet. Is that still something you want in the future? To be honest, uh, he was uh, the one I thought I was. So when after I, um, whatever I went through, right, I was offered him again as a rematch, and then I, I accepted the fight. My, my manager asked me, and I was like, yeah, I accepted the fight. And then all of a sudden, he it didn't go through with him, and then I got I got your pie for so. And obviously, like sharing the card with your good friend Joaquin Buckley. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you guys are going to run into each other sometime during fight week. Or no, no, we've already run each other like twice already. How'd the interaction go? Huh? How'd the interaction go? How do you guys think? Smiley, he was like, "Yeah, hey, I'm." On. Yeah. What did he say to you? <laughs> Uh -huh. What did he say to you? He said, I'm oh, nice to see you. And then I guess he told the equipment room that he wants to be in the same room with me. He likes me and that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, he's not even my problem right now. But ask me after my fight. And I would just, you guys, you feel all that energy that I have inside me drop. So, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Abdul, think, uh, quick one for me. Yes. How exciting is it when you got that, the name, when you talk to management, you're, or you got the contract, not only the main card, the co-main, yes. but also some, a guy that you know is going to come right at you and you guys are going to really, really fuse together and give us an exciting fight. Exciting fight. Yes, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm really hoping for exciting fights because I thought that Buckley's bitch-ass fight was going to be exciting until he started to be like, let me shoot for his leg, let me shoot for his leg, right? Yeah, so I really hope he brings it so we can give the fans, you know, some good taste of how good power works. He has a, he has a lot of power. I know I have a lot of power. Let's just go there, and then let's see who's going to be looking at the light afterwards. Yes. I can't wait. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. You know, when Buckley was in here, he took his shirt off. Do you think that was for clout as well? Of course. That, that motherfucker, everything he does is for clout. It, it, have you guys not realized that shit? He's probably going to put on Instagram that he has his shirt off and shit. Fuck it. Just because of him, I'm going to take my shirt off too. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you got are you guys doing this intentionally to get on my nerves today? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I mean, when I was coming here, I was like, I'm going to get my USA in, you know? My USA. You guys just took that. You guys just took that USA out of me. I'm putting my shirt back on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys took that USA out of me. Sorry. We good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you very much. You guys know how to bring that USA, take that USA away from me. I was trying to be.
Well, I guess first I just have to ask about the the look, the clean shaven look. Is that a is that a decision? Is the the new corporate version? What's what's going on here? Во-первых, хочу спросить насчет того, как ты выглядишь. У тебя ты побрит, ты в красивом костюме, ты такой как бизнесмен. Что это? Это новый ты или что это? Привет, друзья. Рад вас снова видеть. Ну как новый я? Просто готовленный я. Так что новый прикид, новые результаты. Hey friends, very happy to see all of you. Uh, and uh, regarding the look. I wouldn't say that it's a new me, it's just, uh, it's just a concentrated me. So, uh, a new look, a new result. I like it. Uh, supposed to see you fight in August. We didn't get a chance to see that fight happen. I guess, what were your thoughts? Was it frustrating? Were you okay with the extra time off? What were your thoughts? Должны были видеть тебя в августе в бою, но бой не случился. Какие у тебя мысли по этому поводу? Тебя это каким-то образом раздразило? Или наоборот, тебе это время пришло на пользу? Я был, был готовлен к этому бою, но я думаю, я даже чуть-чуть был рад, потому что много времени, больше времени на подготовке, так что на этот бой могу сказать, что у меня были два подготовки. You know, I was ready for the fight in August, but uh, to tell you the truth, I was kind of happy about the extra time. Uh, I, was, I was preparing. Uh, basically, if you think about it, I had two training camps for this one. But uh, what was the focus during that time away? Like, where do you feel you're at in your career and the things that you need to change at this moment? На чем ты концентрировался все это время, пока тебя не было? Продумывал ли ты насчет того, где ты находишься в своей карьере и вообще как провел это время? Мысли, как всегда, много есть. Учились что-то, думали много про мои ошибки и, как я сказал в один интервью. После этого боя, я думаю, что все будет гораздо лучше. You know, there was obviously lots of thinking, lots of reflection, and uh, the time was spent to to learn new things, to sharpen things that I already knew. And as I mentioned in one of the interviews already, uh, I think after this fight, a lot of the questions are going to be answered. Nice. All right, the fight you have is Philippe Lins, uh, former heavyweight. Uh, what do you think of him as a challenge and, and what he presents to you? Твой оппонент, бывший uh, тяжеловес, Какие у тебя мысли насчет твоего соперника и какие ты думаешь он для тебя трудности представит? Мне когда предлагали этот бой, мне очень нравился соперник. Он очень крутой соперник, хороший, три выигрыша подряд. Это очень хороший уровень для меня. И я жду и не дождусь этого боя. You know, when I was offered this opponent, I was really happy about it. He's a really good opponent. He's a really great fighter. He's a, he's a strong fighter. He's got three victories in a row. So I think he's a really great level for me. And, uh, and basically just to test myself against a fighter on that level. So I think it's a, it's a very good fight for me. Nice. And, and last thing for me, you kind of touched on it, but you had kind of a rough 2022. But I just wonder if you feel like everything is back on track now where you need to be or if this win is what proves that you're back where you need to be. Ты чуть-чуть как бы об этом поговорил, что в 22-м году не очень хороший для тебя был год. А как ты думаешь, где ты сейчас находишься? Как бы этим боем, этой победой для тебя это будет очень много ответов. Ты думаешь, что ты уже в том месте, где должен быть, или мы еще должны чуть-чуть посмотреть? Я еще недоволен собой, так что поэтому я говорю, после этого боя я много работал надо мной, над моими мыслями, над моими ошибками, и я жду. Я жду много перемен после этого боя. I'm not happy with where I'm at just yet. Uh, like I said, I worked a lot on myself in preparation to this fight. Uh, I worked a lot on my thoughts, a lot of my mistakes, a lot of uh, on my skills. So uh, I'm really very much awaiting this fight to see where I'm at and what questions can be answered. Hey, Ian. Um, going into your fight in Kansas City, how much pressure were on your shoulders going into that fight and just how happy were you to get that knockout win? В том бою, в который ты шел на Канзас Сити, было ли на тебя очень много давления для того, чтобы победить, и насколько для тебя было радостно, что ты выиграл его именно нокаутом таким, как бы у тебя давление с тебя сошло таким образом? Давления не было. Я даже могу сказать, что был очень релакс. Релакс был у меня, был, так говорить, холодным, 
холодные. Так что и просто я знал, что нужно выиграть. И как знаю, что нужно выиграть этот бой. There was not a lot of pressure going into that fight. Uh, really, I was, I was very relaxed. It was uh, very cold-blooded, very concentrated and relaxed. And, uh, and I just knew that I had to win that fight. Just like I know that this coming fight on Saturday, I also have to win this fight. You're facing, like uh, John said, another fire from heavyweight coming down. Are you just going to be welcoming former heavyweights to the division now? Как уже сказал Джон, до этого это еще один бывший тяжеловес, который спустился на вес ниже в твой вес. Ты теперь будешь тем человеком, который встречает бывших тяжеловесов в твоем дивизионе? Ну, пусть будет так. Sure, let's call it that. <laughs> And then finally, um, I guess before you call it a career, are we ever going to see you paint your body green again? Uh, последний вопрос насчет того, что до того, как ты завершишь свою карьеру, мы когда-нибудь еще увидим тебя в зеленой краске или нет? Oh, я думаю, 10-15 лет еще буду выступать так, что будет время. I think I got 10-15 more years to go, so we'll have time. <laughs> yeah, over here. Does this new professional look mean you're no longer going to be rowdy at the weigh-in face-offs? Uh, вот этот новый, новый, новый твой... Uh, ну, костюм и так далее. Это значит, что теперь uh, в face-to-face -face ты не будешь себя плохо вести, не будешь никаких выбраков делать? Как я сказал, face-to-face -face, все такое, что я делаю, это я не делаю для публика или все такое. Просто мне это нравится. Мне нравится, как я выгляжу сейчас, потому что мне нравится костюм. И если буду, я буду кричать на соперника, просто мне это нравится. Я люблю делать свою работу на максимум. The things that I do at face-offs is not, I'm not doing it for, for the people or for the public. I do that because I like it. So this suit that I have on right now, this is something that I like right now. I like this suit. I like the way it makes me feel. And so, you know, if I happen to yell at my opponent or scream out at my opponent during the face-offs, I do that because that's the way I feel that time and that's what I like to do that time. What can he expect going into this face-off? Чего нам стоит ожидать от этого face-to-face, который будет? К сожалению, и... Не могу уже руки на него положить, так что будет что-то интересное. Him, so rules rules. Rules rules. Yeah, rules. Yeah. Да, нужно все-таки соблюдать правила. So back in the uh, back in the apex, you've had some successful moments, big moments in your career here. Does it have like a nice uh, feel when you step in, or you kind of missing that feel of the big arena? Nah, I'm comfortable here, John. Um, I'm happy to be back here. You know what I mean? I got a good fight. You know, it's exciting. It's going to be a thumper, and uh, you know, it's a familiar feeling. So it's good, man. You know, how, you know how I get it's business. I'm trying to hurt this man. This man's trying to hurt me. So it's not going to happen for me. Nice. Had to take some time off, obviously, to heal up. I guess, what was it like for you to have to step away for a little bit? Was it challenging? And, and, and where do you stand now? A little bit frustrating, you know what I mean? I'm injury prone. I just turned 27 years old. And uh, it's a little bit frustrating because every time I get, like, a good thing going, I kind of get hurt. I, gotta go, I had to get surgery. So after I beat Gerald, I went and got another surgery on my elbow. Everything's good, you know. And, uh, 
yeah, I mean, I've had some other struggles, but I'm here and I'm ready to rock and I'm in great shape. And uh, yeah, man, it's a little bit frustrating, but you, I'm here. I'm ready. This is what I did my whole entire life. So this guy doesn't bring anything I'm not ready for. Dig it. Uh, we talked to Razak earlier. We actually saw you guys kind of run into each other right outside the meeting room. We got a little bit worried for a second. It seemed like it was pleasant there. I guess what you think of that interaction? He can be a pretty intense dude sometimes, but it seemed like it was pretty pleasant. Listen, no man's going to steamroll me. No man's going to walk over me. When I walked in, Joaquin Buckley was kind of hating on the B. Joe Pfeiffer thing, and I heard him running his mouth in the back. And, uh, you know, he was respectful afterwards. But when I walked in, he was like, man, G B. Joe Pfeiffer. And then Abdul was like, B. Joe Pfeiffer, who? He's like, fuck B. Joe Pfeiffer. And then he saw me, and then he put his hand out to shake my hand. So, listen, I was cool with not shaking a hand, but he showed me respect. I gave him respect back. He doesn't have to like me. He doesn't have to respect me. But... That man will feel me, and he will respect me in that cage. That's what matters. So out here, all I said is, yo, you say Buckley's a bitch. He said, yeah, he's a bitch. I said, why you shake his hand? And he's like, oh, because he's the past. You're the present. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, just, just understand. If I think somebody's a bitch, I'm not shaking your hand. You know what I mean? That's me. So I'll keep that intensity. What are you going to do, sleep me? I can bang, bro. I'm here. You know what I mean? That's why I'm fighting you, and, I, and I'll fight everybody. So, uh, yeah, it just irritates me a little bit. You know what I mean? But we cool. I like him. He's just, you know, I, but like, here's the thing. I got respect for everybody in the UFC. You know what I mean? But I'm not afraid of nobody in the UFC. And the reason I say that is because I've been watching all these guys. You know what I mean? I knew I would be in this position. Um, I, I, like, I like Abdul's team. You know, I like his coaches. I, I didn't like the fight necessarily because of his coaches. But you know what? This is, he's not my friend. I like his coaches, but I don't like him. What do you think about him just as a fighter? Like, he does have some impressive knockouts. He's had some maybe gas tank issues over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think overall about what he presents to you? I think that he will never be somebody that was ever good enough or will ever be good enough to challenge for the title. When you look at me, you have question marks, but you know there's potential to be a title challenger, if not a title holder. So I think that's the difference, right? I think uh, I'm young. He's older. I think... He's got big power, so do I, but I have speed, and I have cardio, and I have wrestling, and I have jiu-jitsu. You look at this man, he's a kickboxer, and he's a very dangerous kickboxer, you know what I mean? So, but I think he's very singular in his approach. I don't think he's going to be able to, like, you got to look at the trend of time, right? I don't think he's going to be so diversified in this fight against me, somebody who's long, who uses their range well, who faints back, and uh, I'm not intimidated, bro. Like, you, this, if this guy thinks he's going to walk me down and throw bombs, and they're all hooks, for that matter. You're going to get caught, motherfucker. You're going to get caught. I, 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 I will catch you. And I got bigger power than this man. Let's not forget, he used to be at 170. That's where his knockouts were. So he's dangerous. He's a powerful man, and I respect him. I've trained my ass off because I respect him. I don't want to get knocked the fuck out. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you right now, it's this only man's chance is to knock me out. He has that ability. But as far as what I've seen... His two fights in middleweight, or three fights, or whatever it's been, I don't even know how many fights in middleweight, but his only clean knockout of middleweight was Alessio DiCurcio with a head kick, and that was one shot. And it was beautiful, you know? Um, but it wasn't a crazy setup, and when he knocked out Ribeiro, he hit him with the same jab, right hand, jab, right hand, jab, right hand. Go back, watch the fight. He hit him with the same fucking combo three times in a row. I'm not going to be there for you to hit me three times in a row. This is a mixed martial arts fight. He was complaining that Buckley took him down. And Buckley's not a wrestler. So, he's good. He's not my level. Last thing for me, you went here. I mean, co-main event. You've had a spotlight on you since you came into the UFC, obviously. What do you feel like is next? I mean, is it time to start talking about rankings and ranked opponents? Do you feel like you're still developing a little bit? Like, what do you feel like you earn with a victory here? So, my whole thing in saying taking my time with my career, right, is – Nobody has to understand in this room. Nobody on the UFC team has to understand in this room. I come from nothing. I come from being dirt poor, fucking gathering change to, to get the things that I needed. And, uh, you know, trying to figure out a lot of things in life that I didn't have the guidance for, unfortunately. And if I'm going to fight the top 15, which are the baddest men in the world, I want to start working towards financial security. And I will risk my health, my body, everything, my mind, so I can secure that. I do not want to be one of these guys that is done fighting and is brokenhearted that was giving his everything for the minimum. And I'm not complaining about what I'm getting paid. You know, I'm fighting a guy who's 45th, 46th, something like that. Abdul is a bad motherfucker. Like, that's the thing that's scary about this fight, right? I'm very realistic. 
I know I'm better than him everywhere, but could he beat me? Absolutely, it's a fight. Do I think he's going to beat me? Absolutely not, you know, but I, I will dare to be bold and say the things that I'm confident in. And um, yeah, I mean, you want me to fight top 15 guys, let's talk real money. That's it, that's all. I, I, want, I want to be a superstar. I have the charisma, I have the confidence, I have the fight style, I have it all. But I want to, I want to know that I'm okay when, if, if and ever I have to retire early or quit this sport or whatever. You know, I'm injury prone, so that's also, I got to keep that in mind. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, I just, I keep getting fucking hurt, man. So it's, it's very frustrating. And uh, yeah, let's, let's talk after this. Let me finish this motherfucker. Let's talk. Hi, Joe. Oh, over here. Hello. Um, when Razak was in here, you know, we asked him about Buckley, and his mood changed quite drastically when talking about him versus talking about you in the sense that he seemed to be really angry at him, and he kind of was like, eh, about you. Do you feel like maybe he's focusing a little bit too much on Buckley? Do it. Worry about Buckley. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. Worry about Buckley then. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying I'm being arrogant right now because I'm irritated because that to me right there shows that you're missing what's in front of you. I'm not just some kid. I'm somebody this guy could build his career back up off of. You're six and five in the UFC, bro. And you're on what? You, you're coming off one win and you were on a three fight skit before that or four fight skit or whatever. Technically, you shouldn't even be in the UFC. If I'm at my age and I lost that many times, I'd be cut. You know what I mean? So I just worry about Buckley. I said the same thing to Buckley. I said, who you want to win? And he's like, man, I don't care, but like, you guys are going to steal my bonus. I'm going to steal your bonus. I'm bonus worthy. I talk shit and I back it up. So, and I talk shit in a respectful way. I know Abdul is tough. I've given all my preparation that I possibly could for this camp so I don't get knocked the fuck out. That is this man's only way to beat me. He's not going to outgrapple me. He's not going to submit me. You have to knock me out. That's it. So, you know, that, that's his problem. He wants to still, he said he was focused on me in the present and not the past, but then I said, why are you shaking his hand? So, why, then why are you going to come up here and get upset about it? I don't know all the beef. I understand if another man says he's going to knock you the fuck out and then he wrestles and you're upset. Sure, I can understand it, but this is MMA, brother. You're in the wrong sport if you want to be a kickboxer. I don't know what to tell you. What happens if you fight Bo Nickel? You going to cry that he took you down? Like, get better at fighting. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Joe. Um, How you doing? Good, man. Uh, so, obviously, the, the Contender Series is back. It's in their final week next week. I just wanted to know, like, what that show meant to you. Obviously, you know, your first appearance, you had this horrific injury that kind of <laughs> screwed your life up for a little bit, and then you go back, and then you get this B. Joe Piper, and you get all the spotlight on you. So just what, what did that show mean to you? I think the show... Um I think the show is a great way to show how hungry you are because it puts this pressure on you to go out there and fight out of your comfortability because if you don't and you just fight to your comfortability, you're not going to be drafted as a talent. You know, I think Dana has gotten a lot more lenient and generous with his contracts, um, and um, which I respect, you know what I mean, because this is a hard way to make a living and everybody deserves an opportunity. Now, what they do with that opportunity given, you know, that's up to them now. You know, he gave you the chance to do your thing. But you guys got to understand, Dustin Stoltzfus, I sit here right now, and I don't think there's any reporter that says that that man was a better fighter than me, especially when I came back and I shown. That's a fact. And I was obsessed with it. I even talked to Dana White personally and begged him for that fight, and he just doesn't think it's a good idea. And I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? So I, that's how, that's how hell-bent I was on that. And, um, but you know what? I was a sore loser, too, in a, in, in a way. I am a sore loser. I don't. I don't think that man bested me, so I got discredited, man. I broke my arm. I was out. I had no money. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I went to kill myself. I was like, man, I worked my whole fucking life for this, and now I'm nothing. I'm sitting out in my wrestling coach's basement crying, telling my girl, like, I'm nothing. Like, I'm literally nothing, and I'm sorry I let you down. I, I try not to get upset about it now because I still carry, like, a bitter chip. Like, I, I lost sponsorships. People didn't want to talk to me. But then I came back. You know, I had a strong management team, and uh, they never left me. I've been with Lloyd Pearson since I signed, and I don't say this to, you know, Lloyd Pearson, my management, go with my manager. Not many people can say that they have a friend in their manager, and I truly believe that, and uh, I believe the people on my team that I now have that I'm surrounded with, you know, even Chandler Henry sitting out here who's documented my life for my documentary and, you know, just the people that I've acquired, Alex Davis, Disruptive, and, uh, 
you know, I've really gathered a team to come back, and it was all possible because I got another opportunity on Dana White's Contender Series, and Dana White's the one that put me on the scene, you know, and flew me out. It was super generous, and let's not forget that man gave me a hand, uh, a hand, a helping hand, and and you know, gave me a place to live for the next year so I could pursue this. Third fight, co-main event, third fight in the UFC, your final, your co-main event. I mean, just what's that? What do you think the UFC sees in you? And I guess how does that make you feel that you're the co-main event? Um, I think I deserve to be here, plain and simple. You know, just for the hate that I feel from the other. I don't feel hate from the other fighters, but I can feel the animosity. So fuck you, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're not me, right? You shouldn't be another person. That's what Abdul said. You shouldn't want to be another person, but it rubbed everybody the wrong way. Suck it. Suck it long and hard, brother. That's all I got to say, because... I'm me, and you guys want to be me. That's how I see it. You know what I mean? I don't have to apologize for what Dana said. I don't have to feel weird because they don't like it. Fuck you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm deserving of this opportunity. You think, you, think we're, you think I'm a co-main event because of Abdul? You're 6-5 and five in the UFC. I'm not saying you're not good, but I'm undefeated in the UFC. I'm only 2-0, and, oh and I haven't beat shit. So I'm arrogant, I'm cocky, and whatever. Saturday night, I get to go out there and prove why. And, uh, you know, if it's a shit performance, I'm going to apologize to you guys after because that's not what I come here to do. Uh, but at the same time, I also come here to win both my fucking checks. So I'm still a poor kid. I still have a poor kid's mentality, and I'm not one of these guys that's rolling in money and then is fucking off. Like, this is all I got, brother. This is all I got. And even now, if I slip up now, I don't get a new contract. I don't get to get more money. I don't get to call my shots type deal. So, yeah, I mean, Dana White changed my life. And uh, I'm trying to change the company in a way, you know, make it make it good, make it entertaining. Yeah, this is a shit you don't prepare for, right? I'm gonna go off on a little tangent. Like, this is the shit you don't get taught. You don't get taught what to say. You don't. Everybody's gonna say, dude. There's so many fucking weirdos out there. Everybody's gonna judge me anyway. I have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder because it's like there's so many people. My life is open for judgment, right? Because I've also put my life story out there. So I'm cool with that. But it's like everybody will sit there and shit on something that you're going to do. Oh, man, this kid's cocky. Oh, man, this is... It's like, brother, you could never sit here and do what I do. You could never sit here and do what I do. And for anybody that's going to criticize another fighter, I'll criticize a fighter because I'm going to get in there. I'm a fighter. Now, if I eat my own words and this dude kicks my face through the floor, I, earn, I, earn, that, I deserve it. You know what I mean? But it's just... I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and I'm going to go out there and back it up. So I don't know how the fuck I got on that tangent, but, yeah, I'm here. Oh, good. I'll, I'll, I'll take from that tangent. Um, speaking of like criticizing, I'm, I'm sure you've seen a lot of people criticize Sean Brady and kind of hop on, his, hop off his hype train. They can all suck a dick for criticizing that man. The thing that happened with Jack Dell, Jack Dell is a pussy, because he was literally in the hospital with staff that could have like that got to his bloodstream that he could have died or something bad could have happened to the kid. You know what I mean? You think he doesn't want to fight for a whole year? Come on, bro. I thought that was a low blow. And the only reason I get that upset is because that's, that's one of my closest friends. You don't do that shit. You know, it's not fair to his wife. It's not fair to him. We're all fighters. You should give a fuck about another fighter's well-being. I don't care how much I don't like any of these guys. But I don't want Abdul to be sick or laugh at him because he couldn't make a fight, bro. This is the smallest part of fucking real life. So, yeah, fuck anybody criticizing Sean Brady. Wait till he comes back. Right, exactly, and you know, obviously he su suffered his first defeat. You've suffered your first defeat before. Like, I guess everyone that's just kind of doubting him because you lost to Bilal, who's obviously probably should be fighting for the title. Like, what do you say to that? Bro, he never fought out of the fucking country. I've never been out of the country. We went 14 and a half hours away. Khabib, who's all-time great, is in the corner. This kid, this kid does not express his emotion. He keeps it to himself. He went out there and he, he took a chance, you know, against the best in the world. He's fighting the best in the world. The dude lost once and everybody disrespects him. This is what this game sucks dick for. Because everybody will love you when you're the man and then everybody shits on you the second you slip up. Where, where's the love for the true, the true fans? We're the only country that shits on our own. I can't stand that shit. It drives me nuts. I'm a USA. I'm, I'm American. I rep the flag. I'm going to walk with that shit tomorrow or Saturday, whenever. Where's the support for your fellow Americans? You know what I mean? Respect to Bilal. Bilal was the better man. He earned it. Nobody should discredit him. But don't disrespect your own guy and start talking shit on him. Like, oh, you lost me money. Don't fucking bet your money then. You know what I mean? So, but he took a chance, brother. He took a chance, and he went out on the shield. He didn't tap. He got punched in the face fucking 25 times. And uh, wait till you see the new Sean Brady. Now he's tasted defeat. That kid was beating people people never thought he would beat. And, uh, you know, I love the guy. 
Um, so I get, I am defensive about him, and uh, you know, wait till he comes back, brother. Wait till he comes back. And finally, for me, uh, some of your thoughts on Sean Strickland winning the championship, and if you were a matchmaker, who would you have him fight next? Well, I'm not a matchmaker, um, but uh, you know what? Congrats to Sean Strickland. I know he comes from a traumatized background. He's always been nothing but respectful to me, um, I'm, and even if he doesn't remember me. Uh, but he, uh, he was in the PI once. You know, he offered to train with me and whatnot, asked me to come train. Unfortunately, I was, didn't do it. And, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy for him. You know, he's the guy that's being outspoken in his own way. Um, it's not how I would say certain things, right? But that's why I'm me and he's him. And uh, I don't. I'm not going to buck against anybody that speaks how they feel, and I think that's a rarity these days, and I think people will learn to appreciate the fact that he stands behind what he believes, right or wrong. And that's the whole point of freedom of speech. That's the whole point of freedom of choice. But you're told you're not allowed to say certain words or you're canceled. You're told you're not allowed to go against certain things or you're this, you're that. And it's, you know what? Let everybody be who they want to be, but don't force it upon other people. And that's all I'll say on that so I don't get canceled. But, um, but yeah, you know, so... I'm happy for him, and if I was to say who should he fight next, I don't think I'm a fan of Izzy. You gotta remember, guys, I've been watching this all the way back since UFC 3, 4, or whatever, so I'm a fan of everybody as much as I'm a fighter in here, so sometimes that gets in my own way. Um, mm. I mean, DDP and Izzy make sense to me, and I think the winner of Paulo and uh, Shemaev. So I think, I think Sean should fight the winner of Paulo and Shemaev. Thanks, man. Thank you. You mentioned the financial goals. Are there any other goals you've set for yourself, whether in life in general or in the fight game that you've made since you made your mark on the contender series winning that contract? Yeah, just none that I've shared with you guys. Um, just uh, the only thing that matters for the public, I don't post my personal life for a reason because I know nobody really gives a fuck. So, um, and, and you guys don't deserve to know my personal life. You know what I mean? Like who I love, who I care for, who I want to take care of. There's a lot of things I do, even in my position now, as young as I am, and I, I, I take care of the people that are in my, my core group. And I've had a lot of things that have kind of made me go a little bit sour where I've lost friendships and people talk shit on me and things like that because they think I've gotten big time just because I'm, you know, I got because they think I've made a ton of money. And I'm like, dude. Or, you know, I've kind of cut off even more distraction now because it's the burden, you know, the burden of like, oh, now you got all this hype, brother. I, I was never hyped until I got in the UFC, but in my own head, I was always hyped. So like, that's why the co-main event, doesn't matter. You could put me first, you could put me last. I'm built for it. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean shit to me. What matters is that I win the fight. So, uh, but yeah, I got more than financial goals, brother. I want to, I want to travel the world. I want to buy a house. You know, I want to have a family one day and I want to know that, uh, I took every, every daring scary moment serious and uh, I didn't grow old because I was afraid or because I was scared you know what I mean that's that's one of my worst things I've convinced myself of is I never want to grow old and I get choked up even now because it's like I never want to grow old and realize that uh you know I don't matter no more and I didn't go out there and give it everything I got man because there was a certain point in my life where that was it so I'm here I'm fucking ready and uh yeah, fuck this dude. Awesome. And um, do you have a message for someone that may be going through setbacks in, in their life, maybe when uh, towards reaching their goals? Yeah, listen to the unspoken gut feeling that you have. My biggest telling of greatness, in my opinion, was my gut, my heart, and my mind. It was something I could never put a finger on, but it was something I always felt. And I always said, I don't think I'm meant to be average. I don't think I'm meant to be average. And brother, listen, I have people trying to chop me down, including my father, actively. This dude's got a fake fucking YouTube account to go on and hate on the fact. Tells me, tells me that you know, I was a bad kid or I stole his story. Imagine a father convincing himself that a son stole his fucking story and believing that. Trying to call me a racist, all these things, blah, 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 bro. People, and, and if I give that attention, right, like I'm giving in this interview, just to let you guys know and the things that happen, it's like, there's some shitty people out there and they don't care if you're mentally okay. Everybody says, oh yeah, you should talk, you should do this, you should do that. You should talk to the people that give a fuck about you because in general, the public doesn't care. We're desensitized in this country to not care about other people's problems. So don't sit here and be weak or be afraid to say what you have to say because of cancel culture or because someone doesn't believe in you. So that's what I would say to them. Believe in who you are, don't, negle don't neglect your morale, don't let all this weird socially acceptable shit that's going on allow you to um, veer off track. 
and listen to the unspoken that's in your gut. Because if you don't think you're meant to be average and that's the only thing you can explain it as, stick with it until that's gone. Nobody in this room can outwork you if you have that. I promise. I couldn't go with whatever you think you're going to be the man at. I couldn't go outwork you at that and unless I had that same feeling. It's not possible. So just stay diligent, dudes. Don't quit. Don't be a pussy of 2023. Thank you. Hey, Joe, right here. You're obviously talking about the changes you've made, not only mentally, physically, in your heart, and your mind, and soul, but you also mentioned how you were injury prone for you. Obviously, that's very frustrating, but how have you had made those changes because it is very much a mentality for you that failure is not an option? Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it, that's exactly the strongest thing that I have is failing is not an option. We're always banged up. We always have injuries. <clears throat> but uh, I trained really hard, and I trained with some of the best in the world. And one of my biggest teammates, and the reason I keep shouting him out is because I want everybody to, to realize, you know, who I train with. And one of the kids is sitting right there in Jose Soto. I want that kid to be here one day, and I want to show him, you know, passing on to the next generation, um, even though he's only two years younger than me. Uh, but, you know, I'm planting seeds for him, and uh, I want him to see what this is like, and I want him to experience it. And... Uh, to answer your question, it's just about self-belief. It's understanding that I have skills. Those skills don't go away because I got injured, you know what I mean? It's just I train a little bit different. I train a little bit safer. Then I know when to push. I know when to give my body rest, and that's just really fine-tuning. It's, it's, it's a weird thing, brother. Since, since I turned 20 fucking four, everything's broke on me. Broken hands, broken ankles, broken fucking mental, everything. It's crazy. So, But uh, I'm good, brother. I'm good for this one. I'm here. I'm strong. I feel good, I'm ahead of my weight cut, and uh, I think that's gonna be huge. And uh, no matter what this man says, how he just, you know, pfft, uh, not really thinking about me, you're gonna have to face me. And you're gonna have to, <laughs> I hit just as hard, brother. Awesome, thank you, good luck Saturday. Thank you. So you had the big, uh, big win out in February. I guess just how important was that for you to kind of, you know, get through that little rough patch and get back on the right path? Yeah, you know, it's everything. Uh, winning is uh, not just everything for our own psyche and uh, our trajectory in the sport, but two checks, man. <laughs> it's a big difference, you know, getting that second check. So definitely got me back on track, got my mind right, uh, overcame a lot. Getting to that point and then taking that short notice fight had to prove some things to myself. So... Um, yeah, set, set me right. I guess there was a setback, though. You did have to have surgery. I'm assuming that's from the, the fight itself. Yeah, I, I broke uh, my, uh, my left hand around my thumb area in that fight. And so I was trying to get, get, um, get a quick turnaround, get something going in spring, summertime. So it set us back. And then, I don't know, I guess politics or whatever. Here we are now in October. <laughs> Great, grateful to get something on the board. Uh, was that difficult to deal with, like knowing you wanted to kind of keep that momentum going, or is that just, hey, I, I, yeah. I got to take care of this? Yeah, I mean, that, that's been like the story of my career in here, you know, just kind of like waiting, waiting, waiting. And so whether it be um, politics of finding fights or um, some seldomly an injury, you know, uh, not quite getting the volume I want, but, again, grateful to get this opportunity. And then, um, God willing, no injuries afterwards. Dude, I'll stay, I'll stay slim through the holidays and get, get another one back to back. Yeah, you, you had said, come in, like, hey, I'm going back to 45. But I did wonder, you know, 55, did you go, oh, this sure was a lot more pleasant. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe this isn't the place. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was more pleasant. But no, I didn't, I didn't grill myself the same way I did the first time. Uh, that 70 cut again, or I'm sorry, that 55 cut, 
it was easy um, on a 10 day notice. I didn't have to do any kind of catch weights. So I, I, I reshaped myself from the first cut. I'm not the same size I used to be. And, and this cut was, I mean, infinitely more positive and a better experience than the last. So nice. I definitely want to like, reprimand that, that, that debut I made December 2022, make things right this turn around because I really feel like 45 is the place for me. I like it. Uh, Algio as an opponent, uh, what do you think of him? An interesting character uh, at times, and uh, he's yeah. been in some scraps. What do you think about him as a fighter? Like a Taekwondo, Billy Q. Simple breakdown, I like that. You see, you kind of touched on it, but I guess last thing for me, I mean, you, you get the win here like you're expecting. Is, is the main goal just to get one in before the end of the year? Is it, you know, rankings or matchups, or is it just about like, let's just get another fight? We need some, a couple more checks. Yeah, no, it's uh, de definitely checks. Uh, you know, I, I, want, I, want, I want the checks. Um, I had a fight slated for Sabatini in the summertime. I just saw he got booked. I was trying to roll that in like December because I knew we were kind of around the same timeline. Anything around that pool sounds great. I'm open. You know, I've never turned down a challenge. Um, and that's kind of where I'm sitting at, that, like, top 20 pocket right now at 45. So just give me some action around there. I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to get the volume up. Alexander over here. Seems like whether you win, lose, or draw, the UFC books you in these stylistically fun matchups. What does that tell you about how the UFC sees you as one of their fighters? I mean, they, want, <laughs> they want to watch someone bleed. I mean, they seem, they seem to... Yeah, not mind the, the detriment of my eyes. I got those Nate Diaz eyes now. And so, um, yeah, no, no thanks to the matchmakers. And uh, there was a time when you made your debut, you beat Dariush, and then you went on to beat Olivia Aubin Mercier. Does a win over Algio kind of start that type of run again? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, like I said, I've always been my worst enemy. And the psychology coming off of, man, going into the Moicano wasn't where I wanted to be, and then fell just tumbled into the billy q fight and then kind of hit a hole you know like a, just a personal rut and uh and had to work some things out man and um and i feel like i was able to get to the root of it hit the nail on the head and and i got the fire and i was like man give give me someone and then miller opened up on that short notice and so i took it and was able to execute on what i was thinking and uh and i feel like that that shifted for me. So like even again, approaching this 45 cut, like spirits are infinitely better. I feel great, I feel light. Mentally, like I don't have any weight on my shoulders. I'm excited to do it. I fought meaner, badder, bigger guys than uh, Algio, and that's nothing to come short. I know he's a, he's a threat, he's a problem. Um, but this was definitely, I feel like I've already made the steps in the right direction to get that momentum running, and Algio is gonna be another step in it. You focus on Algio, but um, would you like to get that one back with Billy Q one, one day? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a lot of guys I'd love to get it back, but yeah, for sure him. Like I said, he's kind of around that Sabatini pool. Like, if I beat Algio, just give me his name next. Down for that, yeah. Thank you. Hey, Alex. I feel uh, like, sorry, last thing on that, I feel like I made that fight difficult, and I feel like that could be a really easy fight, and that's something I learned going into this one, too. I made that fight difficult. Uh, I just wanted to do kind of like a dick checkup because you said it wasn't working your last featherweight. Y'all, y'all cannot keep my dick out of your mouth for a whole for a whole interview process. But no, no, I have remained titillated all camp. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Yeah. <laughs> just one interview process, huh? One interview process. <laughs> Don't reference my cop. So good. Hey, that's that's classic. That's classic us interview right there. We'll finish up the dig now. What's up, guys? Alex, I think this is uh, pro fight week number 32 for you or something like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. what, at this point, what, what is the feel ahead of a big fight? Um, it, honestly, this one a little more uh, routine than normal. I'm back at the apex during COVID fight like five times in a row. Then got to hit the road, and that was fun. Made me realize how much I like a crowd. But, uh, but no, this is like a cool martial arts experience, you know, the, the, the whole idea of the Apex, you know, to build a big warehouse to host fights in, really cool. But I'm happy to be back, trained my butt off for this one. You know, not, not a short notice fight, so I had a full fight camp, which is, which is great, but also uh, 
like by the end of it, I'm just like ready to fight and be done with training. So I'm at that point now and ready to rock and roll. You stay so busy with coaching, with commentating, with training, fighting. Uh, and you've always kind of just approached this as like, hey, man, I'm just here to, you know, I don't think I'm going to be a champ. I mean, have you surpassed your expectations into where you ever thought you'd be in life? Yeah, so, I mean, this is before uh, Dana White looking, and I guess it was after Dana White looking for a fight, but before Contender, you know, I got that short notice call to the UFC and just, like, didn't really expect it to happen. You know, at least not, like, prior to, like, the legacy title. So I, I had no expectations, you know, and then, and then when I got signed to the UFC, still didn't really have any expectations, and I like, got my second contract, and then third contract, and then, like, double-digit wins. So, uh, no, I've definitely achieved you know, a lot, but I still have things that I'm looking to achieve. Like, I used to have a goal of 20 fights, but now I have a goal of 20 wins, so I got some work to do. That's awesome. I wonder, though, in some ways, has that been freeing? Because you look at the success that you're having right now, right? I mean, is it freeing a little bit, maybe, if you don't necessarily put those pressures on yourself, but just go kind of enjoy the experience, so to speak? Yeah, 100%. You know, a lot of people ask why I fight, and it's, like, strictly for the experience, for, like, the emotional experience. You know, I don't rely on the money, like, at all, so it's all a bonus. You know, I have I have a job and business at home that, like, I can I can, you know, plan all my financial action with. So, yeah, fighting's just a, it's a fun bonus, and uh, it's, it's never come with any excessive stress. You know, I've seen guys on, like, the local scene who would, who would fight to pay the bills, and you just you can't do that. It's just, it adds too much stress to, to wins and losses. I'll be honest, you know, being almost 20 fights deep in the UFC, seven contracts deep, the win bonuses are nice. And I've, I've got one for, like, the last six or seven fights in a row, so I plan on keeping that streak alive for sure. Uh, no, what a fan you are of the sport, breaking it down. Uh, Joaquin, what have you seen him as a fighter? Obviously a dangerous guy, but you've been in there with some dangerous guys. Yeah, yeah, I fought a lot of guys like him. Uh, thankfully, coming off a of Southpaw fight camp. But, uh, yeah, I mean, nothing to underestimate. The dude's a beast. Um, I trained my butt off for this one. Thankfully, had a, we had a big old crop of welterweights over at Florida, so I've been training with some really good guys. And then when I'm in Houston, a lot of really good welterweights and 85ers. Zach Reese, you guys saw him fight on the contenders. I've been training with him a lot. And uh, I know it's been great. Then all guys at my, all the guys at my camp as well, man. It's been nothing but great training partners. I have a, a a good problem in life. I have like more training sessions in a week than my body can handle. Back in the day, I need I had to like struggle to find training sessions, but now I have to pick and choose the best ones. And you know, it's it's a, it's a good choice. I love it. Last thing for me, win here. What is the plan? Like I said, I know this isn't you know primary job number one. You got coaching and tournaments to go do and things like that. So what's the plan here? Is it do you need some time off? Are there their names on the horizon? What do you think you get here with the win? Man, uh, it really depends. You know, there's like a cliche, don't don't plan a fight ahead. So I'm really focusing on Saturday, and then depending on you know how the body feels, the outcome of the fight, all that action. You know, I'd like to turn around as fast as possible. I've noticed there's a five month cycle with welterweights. Like pretty much every five months we get booked. If I could, if I could, you know, shave that down to every three months, that'd be awesome. So I'm looking to stay active, especially now. I feel like I'm truly in my prime. I got another three or four good hard years of doing this, and my body durability has always held up really well. And uh, yeah, so keep them running. You know, I'm not looking ahead too much, but I know there's a card in, in Austin, Texas, in December. It'd be cool to get a third one in this year, but but I'll make that decision on Sunday. Hey, Alex, um, I just wanted, you know, obviously Fury uh, has. You know, like you said, Zachary's got a contract. Um, I just wanted to know, like, who are who are some prospects that fans should be looking looking out for in Fury right now? Man, Fury's fun to watch. I uh, I was telling uh, who was who was headlining? My boy Julius Holmes fights at Fortis. I was like, hey, there are some Fury main events that are like you know, in sync, in caliber with, you know, like UFC under fight cards. I was like, so don't undersell this success. And my boy Jules got a great second round Darsh choke. It's a second time main eventing in Oklahoma. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very biased here and talk about my teammates, but, but Julius Holmes, I mean, he'll be in the UFC. He's a big old strong welterweight. I think he's 9-2 and two now, maybe 10-2. and two. And then Jacoby, Jacoby Smith, he's solid too. I've been tra I trained a lot with him. I hadn't trained with him prior to this camp. And that dude's a beast. He learns everything so fast. His wrestling is like otherworldly. I think he's 7-0 and if I'm not mistaken. So he's a shot away. And then Nick Piccinini as well. I mean, he's a beast. And then, uh, then I even got one of my guys, Sean Kennard. He's 2-0. and He's an 85. He's a big old strong 85. Biggest beard in MMA. But, man, he, he hit a brutal TKO. His guy actually couldn't answer the bell. And then beyond that, I have a lot of amateur prospects. Like one guy 5-1, and one, one guy 5-0, and oh, both fighting for belts pretty soon. So we have, a, we have a couple of uh, cool generations coming up. But, yeah, any Fury main card is awesome to watch. 
and uh, and I really enjoy calling the fights there. I get to you know really really understand like the competition in Houston, and I can talk MMA all day long. I know John Morgan's been doing some commentary himself. It's a lot of fun, especially if if you know the material well. And like I teach it at the gym, I use it in the cage, and then I explain it cage side. So I mean, I feel like I understand all aspects pretty well. Awesome, thank you. And I was going for the Sean Kennard look today. So uh... hey, my man, yeah, shaved head, big beard. I like it. Looks over here. Um, you mentioned your team, some of your teammates there. One of your teammates from Gracie Baja, the Woodlands, uh, Ricky Turcios, he came off a win in November. Have you heard of when he might want to return to the Octagon? Yeah, so uh, we are talking about matchmaking very actively for him. I know he had seen Sean at the, the Noche event and told him he was ready to rock and roll. So we're waiting on a date, and, uh, and I, I like combed through the roster of the uh, Bantamweights who like weren't booked yet or haven't been booked in a while. And, uh, and yeah, he and myself and you were all waiting for a name and a date. But yeah, Rick's the man. He's, uh, he's like me. He stays super active. Uh, he's holding down the fort while I'm gone. But yeah, I can't wait to see him fight. He, uh, man, Ricky's awesome. Has such a, like, a good polarity to him, a good pull from like, you know, like the South American crowd, the Asian crowd, and the United States crowd. And he gets recognized a lot, man. I'll tell you, the South American fight fans, they are the best fight fans. Like, I've been, more, I've been recognized more by South American friends than anyone else. But, but yeah, I can't wait for Ricky to fight. Dude's a fireball. I had, done a, I had done eight rounds on Tuesday before I flew out, and I had him with me rotating in. He's just a scrambler, man. He is impossible to hold down, and he's a fun guy to work with. I agree with the fan uh, statement there, but um, how has it been like seeing his development like from when he was young to winning the Ultimate Fighter and now obviously being a UFC fighter? Yeah, man, it's awesome. Uh, so I got my striking coach sitting behind you guys, Matt Wald. He and myself and Ricky have been in the mix since we were all teenagers. Ricky's 16, Matt, I think 17, and me, uh, 18, and I'm 33 now. So we were, like, we're like one of the only two Matt and I like duo corners in Houston who've like stayed the course. And, uh, and we're the only two guys out of Houston to have two like homegrown UFC fighters in a gym we started at and we're still at now. But yeah, Ricky's the man. He always works so hard. And he just fights his butt off. But he's always been a pace guy. Like anytime we would do sprints or any strength and conditioning, he would always come in first place. The dude's just got a, a tank on him. We always made a joke if he did Survivor, he would win. And one time he did an in-studio version of Fear Factor, and he won it. Fear is not a factor for that man. So very cool. Thank you. Right here. Uh, I want to follow up with what Harold just said. What are some of the similarities that you see in Ricky that you see in yourself? Man, we're very different fighters. Um, we both do a lot of jujitsu, both jujitsu black belts. He uses his a bit more than I do. One of the only guys to pull off consistent X guard sweeps in MMA. But uh, I, I think just like living the martial arts lifestyle the most is the best. You know, like he's one of the coaches at my gym as well. So we're in there every day. When we're not training our butts off, we're teaching. And, and I feel like we're both at like a very high level of preparation in terms of our like diet. You know, he works with a PI a lot. And uh, strength and conditioning is like a must. You guys will see him, man. He's, he's, he's put on some size too. And, uh, and yeah, so I think just like living the martial arts lifestyle and the high level of preparation has really like kind of consumed our lives for the better. And we can both see differences. Earlier you had talked about Survivor and Fear Factor. I was just curious, how would you do in, in a scenario like that? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, probably not great. I try to conspire against people in Survivor. And then in Fear Factor, I wouldn't want to eat gross stuff, so I'll just I'll I'll make my prize money by fighting. Awesome, thank you. Good luck Saturday. Cool, thanks guys.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Three wins in a row now on a little bit of a streak. I guess, uh, how satisfied do you feel with where your career is right now? Um, I'm very happy, very glad. Always when I come here, a special moment to me. And three in a row, this make a lot of a lot of good 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 things in my in my hand, the things that I'm, I'm dreaming for, and I'm very happy, pretty happy, but I'm focused at my next challenge already. Nice. I wanna keep my win streak. Absolutely. You know the years that you had of rescheduled fights, of canceled fights, of problems, of of you know all the time away. Did you ever think like maybe this is not gonna keep going? Yeah, I'm just, I have a, I had a lot of problems, family problems, injuries, uh, personal problems, but um, I win over everything, putting my mind in place, and just keep going, and never give up, and I'm here, I'm here doing what I love, and always a pleasure to be here, and I'm ready, ready to put in another statement. Very nice. Uh, Iwan Kutalaba, a bit of a, a wild man sometimes, a little, little crazy. Uh, wh what do you think about the matchup with him? Yeah, Kutalaba is a great opportunity to fight him. He's a, he's a great name. He's a former uh, hanked guy. So, but I'm, had, I'm ready. I'm ready for the challenger. And it doesn't matter what he's, he's doing, what he, he, he's, he's best at him. I'm ready, and I'm sad that this fight has uh, two ingredients, gasoline and fire, and everybody knows when they're putting this together what happened. <laughs> Very <laughs> I'm nice. I'm ready. Should be exciting. Uh, you win here. What, what do you feel is next for you? Where, where do you feel like you go in your career? Yeah, I'm, I'm great to win over Ian Kotalaba. I think I deserve to be on the top 15. And, and let's see what's going to happen next. I'm going to let the UFC give my next opponent after that and i'm just uh i will be ready for the all the challengers but i want to do a very great step each fight i love it and last thing for me you kind of touched on it but it looks like it could be a pretty quick fight a pretty exciting fight is is that kind of what you're expecting yeah um i'm ready for for all the things that can happen during the fight wrestling jiu-jitsu or striking i'm a guy like uh knock out my opponents I'm always looking for this, and this fight not going to be different, but I'm ready for everything. I'm coming here to get my W and my four fight win streak. Good? Yep. Thank you, guys. Good Sorry for my English. Oh, I'm, good. Doing, doing, I'm trying. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day.
oh well we're here here we are back in the main event slot right but i mean not a short notice built around you from the start i mean you wanted these moments like this is it is it is it everything you dreamed it would be what's the excitement level like for you right now uh first of all i'll be watching like all the little dana stuff bro you're fucking killing it okay i told you you were fucking talented Bro, you keep Dana going with the right questions and stuff. It's not no bullshit. Like, I really like what you're doing, brother. Keep that shit going. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. And now, what was your question now? You hearing this headlining slot, man. I know you always wanted these big spots, and you kind of got forced into one. But, I mean, now you're getting these big bookings, right? I mean, what's, what's the feeling like for you? Yeah, it's, it's amazing to be uh, the main event, you know, to get that honor, um, get the poster. This is something on my bucket list. So I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I finally got to... Put these, I'm gonna get like two or three of them in to put in each one of my homes. And so it's a blessing to be a, a main event. And, they, and thank you to my company for picking me. They know that I'm gonna come in and end the night raw. Yeah. And the other thing that I've been noticing about you is the messages of positivity that you've been sending out there, not just for me, but for people in general, you know. And I just wonder, you know, why that continues to remain such an important thing. I think it, it, at one point in your life, you almost felt like there was a chip on your shoulder all the time. And now I feel like you're really like trying to keep people to not be in that same place you were. I don't know, brother, like, I guess just, it's always been my message. I think that, like, maybe when I was a little youngster, a little more, you know, I had a little, that little thug shit, you know, I was, I got that street shit in me, you know, and so I'm sorry if I was that way when I was first coming in, but it's always been this way. It's like, just to love people, impact people, touch people, you know, like, that's always been my message. It's always been my thing I do behind the scenes. Has that become more important to you almost even than what you accomplished in the cage? Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Um, because that cage, you're in there for 15 minutes, you know? Um, but what we do outside the cage, that's what my dad's always told me, the biggest lesson that he, one of the biggest lessons he's told me is, hey, it's not about what you do in the cage, it's about what you do outside of it too, you know? It's gonna be most impactful. And so that's only 15 minutes in there, but maybe I could tell you something that lasts us a lifetime, you know? And, and you go like, hey, all right, I got it, you know? And so, I don't know. That said, the more success you have at the cage, the bigger the platform gets. So let's talk about the matchup you got with Grant Dawson. Um, what do you think of him overall as an opponent? I mean, you've seen pretty much everything there is out there at this point, but what do you think of him as a fighter? Man, I didn't even know who that guy was. I never even heard of him, you know? Um, and that goes to his body of work. I think the issue is that, like, it's been kind of boring, you know? And, and he's been in the apex fighting. But had he been around these crowds, he would already feel the pressure from the crowd. They would let him know, we don't really like to see what you're doing, you know. Um, even though sometimes he's got some finishes, so it's like, cool, yeah. But it's a snore fest. And so it's going to be a real test for me is more so make a boring guy exciting, you know. That's the real fight. Yeah. I mean, I think, look, that's what people are looking at this is, right, is the one guy that's going to try to grapple against the one guy that's got the slick striking on the feet. I mean, I know everybody's a well-rounded martial artist, but is that basically the type of fight you're expecting to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically is. Hey, uh, but that's the thing, too. I'm going to do it all. You know, I'm going to do it all. If I have to wrestle with this kid, I'm going to show him. You thought I wasn't going to come and wrestle you? You thought I wasn't ready? I came ready, kid. Nice. Uh, we know you're going to go out there and put on a show for sure. Uh, the last thing for me, what other boxes are there for you to tick? You know what I mean? I know you said you're focused more on growing the things outside of the cage, but you've always said, I got these things I want to do. I want to get these before. What other boxes are there for you to tick? I was thinking about that today. I'm like, man, all right, I ticked off that box now. What box will be left? I'd probably say maybe the Ultimate Fighter. You know, we're hosting the Ultimate Fighter. I think I'll bring some new interesting shit to it, you know? So maybe doing something like that. Um, besides that, it's still the same goal. When I got in this game, I got in here to, I was a poor kid with nothing, and all I wanted was a home. And so I bought my first home. Me and my girl got in a fight, and she would always kick me out of it because I put the house under her name. And so I always get kicked out of my own home. So then I bought another one. I'm like, all right, all I'm going to do is pay for this one off. But then somewhere along that journey, I had three kids. And so with the three kids, I had to get three homes to take, sure, take care of all of them. I wanted to, my gift to them is, hey, this is my gift to you. I ain't got much. I don't make a, a lot of money. But... And my dad didn't give me anything. I may not be able to pay for your college and all that stuff and everything, but at least I could do is give you a home that I didn't have. I had to go to 50 different homes, you know, live homeless, be this and that and do this. You'll never have to worry about someone else taking your home from you. Here's this. It's paid off. You'll always have a spot to stay. 
Is, I said last question. I see. Is that your proudest accomplishment, right? Like, it's not necessarily like, you know, the traditional American family, white picket fence, we're all together, you know, but, but that, that they're all taken care of and they don't have to worry the way you did? I wish it would have went the American way, you know, <laughs> but my life is chaotic, you know, and, and I'm doing the best I can, and this is the best thing I can give back. I'm glad it, that I can still be here to, because most people don't make it this long. I think I'm 10 years, almost 11, or I don't know where I'm at with this in this game. 46 fights. A lot of guys don't make it this far. And so I'm blessed for every day I get. Hey, Bobby. Uh, I just want to go back to your win over Tony, man. Uh, you know, obviously we all love your boxing, but how did it feel to show off your grappling and put to sleep the guy who uh, is known for his grappling? Yeah, no one thought I had grappling. Nobody understands my uh, wrestling or my grappling. I just don't really show them, you know. Um, me and Gaethje both understand that, like, uh, it's not really what the crowd wants to see, and we understand that, and we're going to give you what the crowd wants. We're trying to be superstars. We're trying to give 110% to what it is that fans came for. We're here to sell out shows. We're here to impact people. And it's not that time for wrestling like that. Wrestling, like, if you can do it and do it in an exciting way, cool. But being boring, that's not that's not me. Was it nice to add adding another legend to your resume? Yeah, yeah, to get that. Now I feel like two legends fought each other. Now I'm the last. I'm the last of a dying breed, you know? Everyone's gone. Nate's gone. Jorge's gone. I'm the last of the OGs. Um, I, I just want your thoughts on Tony booking another fight. He's fighting Patty Pimblett. And I know that you wanted to fight Patty. Um, what do you think of that matchup? I used to want to fight Patty, you know. Um, my thing is this. I got the name. Just like this Dawson kid. I got the name. You guys are fighting me for my name, and you want to get your recognition, and that's cool. But uh, when it comes to that, back to the Patty and the Tony stuff, like, I tell everybody it's like it's, it's story writing for the UFC. They know how to write stories. And so they're writing this story, and everybody's story goes differently. Like, some people are like, well, why didn't you make it, or why didn't you do this and that? The story is not written exactly like that. There's... Everybody got their own position to play. And so, like, most of the time you don't see someone who's going to come on a six-loss streak fight someone who's on a six-win streak. But the story writing is going there, and they want to build that kid. So they would keep him away from me so they could build him. It's too risky. Um, so the story writing, they're just writing the story. And my story is a little bit different. I fought everybody who came in front of me. I didn't pick and choose. I never got to say no, that. You know, if, if anything, I got injured. Besides that, I fought everybody they put in front of me. My story is a, a true chaotic mess that's like, oh, well, he thought he was going to be gone. We thought he was this. He lost that one. He came out, but he came back and he did. I just fought everybody they put in front of me. I wanted to ask you about Tony. Obviously, you've been in there. You beat him. Uh, he's on the six fight losing streak. I'm, I'm sure you don't really care about another man's you know, journey in this sport, but like being in there with him, like, do you feel like his. His time's coming to an end? Like, 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 what do you think? First of all, I do care um, because we're, we're, the, we're the old guys. We're the, we're the legends. Like, you want to always see, root for him. You always want to see him be, be, be good, you know? I, don't, I, I love Tony, and it was hard for me to fight him, you know, because everywhere I went, somebody told me that's my favorite fighter. It's like, man, I really love you, Bob, but I love him more, you know? So it's like, hey, it, it sucked, you know, to have to fight that guy. But I would love to, I want to see him go. I want to see him be positive. I want to see him win. I want to see him have all the great things that he deserves. What do you think of uh, Nate versus Jake? Nate versus Jake. Um, staged, you know. Um, what do you expect when you're fighting heavy, that high up? These guys have all the right uh, things in favor for them, you know. Everything's in their favor. It's supposed to go that way. But... I just think that he got that lucky shot besides that. I feel like I saw Nate putting the pressure on him, beating him, except for, you know, oh, he got that little drop, and it's like, oh, fuck. You know, they're going to give it to him. Thanks, Bobby. Bobby over here. After your first UFC main event against Islam Mahachev, you mentioned in your post-fight interview that you'd rather not main event again, given that you just want to get the fight over with. Seems like you adjusted your view on that. What changed? Um, I think that when I fought Islam, I had never been used to the main event, and so, like, it was 10 days notice. Then I just, I, like, it was so invasive, my privacy. Like, these guys are riding around. They want to get in the car with me. And they were all these cameras. I'm like, man, I can't even talk to my coaches. It was just like, 
it was too much for me. Like, ugh, I don't like that, you know. Where everybody's in my face, everybody's like, what, what, what's going on? What are you going on? I'm like, oh shit, this is what it takes to be a main event. And so I was kind of like thrown off by that part of it. But after that, I'm like, oh, I can I can get used to it now. It'll give me a little more time to get prepared and stuff. So let's do it. In that same interview, you also mentioned that you learned you learned a lot about the wrestling that Islam has in his arsenal. Are those takeaways going to help you in this matchup with Grant as he also brings a wrestling-heavy game plan? Yeah, yeah. I just felt like I didn't have the proper time to prep for Islam. You know, um, I was sitting on the couch. My girl's supposed to have surgery. I'm smoking a blunt, you know. I'm smoking weed, and they're like, hey, get up and fight again. I'm like, oh, great. Fuck it, let's do it, you know. And so I think that this one's going to be a lot different now that I have the time to, prep, to prepare. And uh, who would you like to coach against on The Ultimate Fighter if you get your wish granted? Hmm. Hmm. Who's got spunk? Who's got flair? Who's got, like, I would say Patty, but because he's, like, he thinks he's kind of cool, you know? He's a weirdo, but let me see. Who else got some spunk? Drew is too nice. Drew is too nice, and, and I'd like to fight him again, but... He's such a nice guy. You can't fucking hate that guy at all. He's, I wouldn't even know. Let them pick. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Bobby, thanks for taking the time. And shout out to the three houses. That's fantastic to set up the family, man. Awesome. It almost seems like you're wearing a house now with all the jewelry. <laughs> you said to, you have to make a boring uh, fighter exciting. How do you do that without taking risks and giving too, too much openings? Um... I feel this way about a few fighters that I had to fight. Like, like when I fought Pat Healy, he was similar. When I fought uh, Jacob Volkman, boring to me. But I got fighter tonight, so I took a boring fighter and I made it exciting. You know, um, Clay Guida's I would say more of an exciting fighter, but he had a little bit of that. And I'm like, could it be one of those snore fests that could go bad? You know, and I did it again. So. Um, that's just the true fight is like those guys are like they just want to win they're not interested in doing anything bigger than that being like i want to have a catalog of great fights where you can go back and watch the shit from 10 years from now some of these fights like i, I never even heard of the kid i never watched him i never was like oh my god who's this this grand Gosling guy you know i didn't even hear about it until he got into my face and is um at all that a dangerous guy who wants to come take that Bobby King, King brand and, and use it and parlay that into bigger fights, more main events? Um, he can't take that. He can't take that. All he could do is do his job and, and, and be him. And it, he's done that so far and it's not been working. So there's like, like I said, again, a story. I, I don't know how many win streak he's on and you would think that they would be promoting him, but the, the powers that be are like, uh, he's missing something. He hasn't got that yet. He's still missing something too. Put yourself on that limelight, you know? Islam started doing some certain things that got him like, oh. But then again, they say he got it after fighting me. So he's like, well, Islam got it after fighting me. I'll fight Bobby Green, and then I'll get it too. All right, man. Can't wait to see it on Saturday, and good luck. I just want to follow up on the tough thing. It wouldn't be the same weight class, but I feel like maybe you and Kevin Holland coaching against each other would be pretty fun. Uh, oh, man. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin's the shit. Kevin's the shit. I don't want to talk bad about no bad, the no black man. Me and Kevin have run into each other. We've had ups and downs, and I just want nothing but greatness for Kevin. That's it. I just want to see him do great. I'm just happy the guy's a fucking legend. He does. He impacts the crowd really great. I just want to see nothing but great for Kevin. Thank you. Is the plan still to fight Jim Miller at UFC 300? That's a great question. Man, I was thinking about doing this. Like, my plan was to fight this fight and fight one more in December. Right now, I got the most active. Nobody's fighting more than me right now. I'm fighting. I'm putting them out. Old as I am, 46 fights, 40 whatever, nobody's still doing it like me. I'm trying to pop one off. And I'm the most active. How do you young guys let me beat you? You know what I mean? How are you letting me get more work than you guys? I should be banged up and at the house, you know? And so... I want to do one in December since I bought this house in Vegas now. I'm a Vegas resident. I'm trying to get my little ID and stuff, my little Vegas ID. So I want to do a show for Vegas before we left, maybe at the end of the year. Try to, even if I got a headline, the, the, the prelims, because I know they already got it all full up. You know, I'll take the prelims. I don't care. As um, long as I'm getting my money and I'm getting close to my goal, which is make sure all my kids have a home. 
well, what made you move out to Vegas? Uh, uh, everybody says it. It's taxes. <laughs> it's taxes. California's crazy, you know? California's crazy. The money I got to pay in taxes. So I'm like, man, I'm going to move my business and everything out to, Cal uh, to Vegas. So I'll be half the year in, uh, in Vegas and half the year in California. Thanks, man. By the way, I'd sign up to watch you and Poirier on top. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Poirier got spunk. Yeah, he got it. He got it. I'll give it to him. I feel like Holloway as well. You both take pride in your boxing. And then, hey, he's got the record for the most amount of hits in his division. I got the record in my division. That'd be a sick-ass fight. Holloway's dope. I got nothing but respect for those type of guys like that. That'd be sick. And then we won't both talk to each other. We're going to talk shit, too, and beat each other up. That's a great-ass fight. Last thing I want to say, I know he's going to be watching. Dawson's going to be watching. He came up on me right now. He tried to shake my hand. But he came up on the side of me real quick. I didn't even notice him. like, oh, fuck. And he, he hit me with the nice guy. Good luck stuff, you know? And I wanted to be respectful. I wanted to because he made a comment. He said, Bobby Green's going to try to get in my head. I've never tried to get in anyone's head. I don't know where they got that from. I'm just a truth teller. And to be honest, if you start that shit, then I bring that type of shit to you. So I'll be listening to what y'all say. And when y'all say something disrespectful, I just go over there and say, hey, oh, I'm going to bring my shit. And I just, like with Tony, I got labeled as a bad guy. But Tony said he saw fear in my eyes. So when we locked up, I'm over here. He looks at me yelling at him, yeah, 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 yelling at him. I'm like, oh, I look like a bad guy. But I'm like, you started it. You brought that. And I'm just here to set the truth, you know? And so Dawson, I'm watching the fights with us and a little uh, video or whatever. And he was in the cage, and he's in the cage, and he's sparring, or he's hitting mitts. And he's like, come on, Bobby. Come on. You like that? I'm ahead. Uh, uh, uh. I'm like, what? The only problem was I wasn't there. So where was I at? When so when you see this, Dawson, I want you to do exactly what you were saying in that cage when I'm there. I didn't see you. I wasn't there. You were calling my name and stuff. No, 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 no. Do that same thing in the ring with everybody there when it counts.
I gotta say, man, I apologize for ghosting you. All good. Yeah, I'm a jerk. <laughs> all good, all good. <laughs> Well, Drew, I know you were not happy after the last one. Were you able to move past that at all? Man, we're starting off with that question. Start, all right. We're going to start with the past. <laughs> we're start with the past and then we get to the good stuff. You know? Yeah, man. Uh, Did you move uh, past it or it's still burning a little bit? Ah, man, it's it's super unfortunate. It, well, just because, like, out of 70 career fights, that's only happened to me twice, you know? And so, like, it was, like, the first time in a long time that's happened to me. And, uh, yeah, it's it, it still hurts, right? It's unfortunate. But, uh, you know, you just move on from it. Well, I was going to ask, I mean, like, this is game sometimes, right? Like, it's weird. Like, you wonder, are there lessons you can take out of it? Or do you just go, well, you go into a firefight, sometimes you get clipped, and that's all you can take out of it. I mean, can you say that? Or do you have to say, like, no, we've got to fix something. We've got to change something. I mean, you definitely got to fix something. So uh, we, had, we had to, like, you know, look at that loss and, like, what caused it. Um, but I think my big thing is, like, it doesn't represent you as a fighter. Uh, Junior Hernandez knocked me out, like, 10 years ago. And, and any of you guys know that name? No, it doesn't matter. Adriano Mar Martin knocked out Islam Makachev. Where is he at? So it's like, what, like one knockout doesn't represent your legacy. You know, it's not what you do once, it's what you do often. And I'm here to prove Saturday night that we're still in it. That's awesome, man. That's a great way to look at it. Uh, Ricky himself, what do, you, what do you think of him as an opponent? What he presents to you, a veteran of the game for sure. Man, jack of all trades. Uh, he's super tough. Um, not as active as any other, like, other fighters. So, like, I don't know what he's going to bring to the table. Um, so, fighting the Apex, fighting Ricky Glenn, it, it, it reminds me of being a regional professional again or, or an amateur to where you really didn't know much about your opponent. You just showed up and you and you had to figure it out then, and uh, and so we're back to the proving grounds. I lost my last fight, unfortunate. We got to prove it, you know, who I am to everyone else again, and that that's what fighting Ricky Glenn, Ricky Glenn means to me. Do you like that? Do you like that approach? Do you like the idea of maybe not being hyper focused on knowing every move and every pattern that they have? Do you enjoy that more, or is it more of a challenge? I thrive in the chaos, and Ricky's bringing it. So uh, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm ready, prepared, polished, and sharpened to be ready for anything he brings to the cage. That's awesome. And you know what a run you were on and all the discussions that were being had. You win this, you get that momentum right back. Do you start talking about rankings, matchups, you know, what, what it is, or, or, or do you kind of wait a little bit to get back into that mindset? Um, man, we try to play the whole, like, let's see what kind of big fighters we can get. And, uh, you know, like, I'm, I'm not really into that. I'm into just staying active, being busy. Father time's coming for us all. And, uh, you know, I want to have more fights in the cage than one great opportunity. So, uh, yeah, so after this fight, great. Like, if I get a top 10, top five main event, co-main event, like, that would be fantastic. But what matters to me is being able to step into that cage and being in front of you guys as often as possible until I got to hang it up. That's awesome, man. Uh, last thing for me, I guess, is there a perfect scenario here? Obviously a victory, but is there a certain way? Is it like I, I go make a statement? Is like I kind of want to get in a firefight just to prove that, that you know, I, I can do that? Like what's, what's perfection for you here? Uh, perfection to me is being able to bring in that old Drew Dober that brought me to the knockout streak, right? We kind of left it behind in the last fight against Matt Frivola. And so I felt like I just handed it to him, right? I started believing you guys that I got a left hand and a granite chin. That's all I needed, you know? And uh, that's not what brought me to that, right? I was doing so many things before that we kind of just left behind. So a perfect night for me is bringing back that. Hey, Drew. Yes, sir. How's dad life? Oh, man, it's fulfilling, exhausting all at the same time. Uh, but, uh, man, what a, what a different kind of motivation that is. You know, it's, uh, man, it, it's not an easy answer. As all dads know, right, it, it's work, but it's probably the best work you'll ever do. And uh, in, in combination to fighting, it's just such a beautiful balance that now fighting is just so much exciting with her you know obviously there's so much that goes into fighting right the training the dieting the everything so how do you balance having a newborn being a dad training like how did you find that balance and like what is your balance um she's she was able to slow me down 
Um, I have a nasty habit of just overdoing things and just, you know, being in the gym too often, this and that, and now I can't be. She requests my presence uh, more often than, you know, I have time for. And so now I'm not in the gym. I'm not doing, like, I'm not overtrained. Uh, and, and so it's, it's balance. It's, uh, she was able to pull me back, and now I have quality work instead of just quantity work. Is Daddy Dober a mythical fighter? I mean, we're about to find out Saturday night. You watch it. <laughs> um, and finally, uh, what video games are you playing? Uh, man, Starfield just came out. And uh, man, what a beautiful game that is. And uh, I had no idea that it was actually coming out until I, I rolled up on Steam and it was just number one. I was like, oh. So, yeah, we've been neck deep in Starfield. Well, as much as I can when the baby goes to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Over here. Uh, a while ago, you put your name in the hat for a potential fight with Michael Chandler. I mean, obviously, the stuff with McGregor's there. Um, whether it ends up happening or not, do you still are you still interested in a potential Chandler fight one day? Oh, he's definitely waiting for Connor. I'm still unsure if Connor's going to ever show up. But uh, I mean, if he wants a five foot nine southpaw to get him warmed up for that fight, I'm absolutely available. And he just got to let me know when he wants to do it. Uh, he said he's 190 pounds right now. I can fight him at 170. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm here for the, the excitement, and he's, he brings it as well. Yeah, I feel like that would be a very exciting one for the fans to see. Yeah, yeah. I, we got to convince him of it because I can't pull in the red penny night like Connor can. So. Fair enough. Thank you. Who do you got in the main event? Um, man, I like both those guys. They're great. Um, so like I, I, I love both those guys on a personal level, so this has to be a very like analytical answer. And I think Grant Dawson's wrestling is going to get him the victory. I don't know it's gonna be the most exciting fight, but I think Grant Dawson's wrestling is gonna showcase. And then just the rematch between Islam Makachev, Charles Oliveira, do you see it going any different or or, or, or are we gonna to kinda of see the same fight? It will be different. Um, but I think the result will stay the same. I, I feel like Charles is going to make the fight even like tougher this time around. Uh, but I think Islam's going to be able to uh, get that victory uh, either in the later rounds or by decision. Had one more, actually. Um, in July, your fellow Omaha, Nebraska, and Terrence Crawford made history by beating Errol Spence. I just want to see your take on that. I mean, there's something in the water in Omaha, Nebraska. I mean, toss on Google how many fighters in the UFC, how many combative athletes are the best in the world from Omaha, Nebraska. Like, there's something in the water, and uh, you know, I'm showing it. Anthony Smith is showing it. We got Grant Dawson from Omaha tonight, or Saturday night main event. Uh, Terrence Crawford is just also showing it that uh, you know, when, when you come from a small town like Omaha, you, you can fight pretty well. And you, you've seen him a couple of times. How's your guys' relationship? Oh, yeah, no, we get along great. Um, I had the the wonderful opportunity to spar Terrence Crawford, and he showed me that it's apples and oranges, this game. Boxing is on a different level and uh, one of the worst sparring sessions of my life. But, uh, yeah, dude, he is super talented, and uh, yeah, I want to see him fight Canelo. Given, given that uh, sparring experience with Terrence Crawford, I mean, we've seen some of these MMA guys hang up their MMA gloves and do some fun boxing fights. Is that something you'd like to do one day? Yeah, the celebrity boxing would be great. You know, just get paid to kind of, you know, rough house in boxing with some other MMA guys. But to make an actual strategical run in boxing would be almost impossible. Like, I, I spent a lot of my time learning grappling, wrestling, kicking, and they just got to focus on two hands. And, and the sport is different politics and the rule set so uh yeah i would love to do some celebrity boxing if jake paul wants to do it we, I, we could do it with him too but uh um yeah so yeah i would love to thank you drew just wanted to point out how great your analysis was because when we were talking to bobby he said he would have to make a boring fight exciting so that's you guys are pretty much just aligned as far as like i'm sure he's aware of the grappling heavy wrestle style that grant will need to take in order to, you know, not get into a Drew Dober fight. Right, right. I mean, Bobby's the entertainer. I mean, that's why he's the main event and I'm the second fight on the main card, right? Like, he, he's loud. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think now we had a transition. Like, we're no lo we don't longer care about the toughest fighter in the room, right? We just want to see the loudest people in the room fight. And, and Bobby's loud on top of being talented. He's just loud. And so that's what got him that opportunity. And so he knows he's the entertainer in this fight. And that's why he has that opportunity. He pretty much skipped over me and went to a main event. 
meant. Um, but and then Grant Dawson knows that he's just a strong wrestler, and uh, yeah. So I don't I don't know if it's like a an insight. I think it's just very obvious. We got Grant Dawson versus Bobby Green. We know who the entertainer is. <laughs> and last for me, thank you for sharing that with us. That you know you've been in how many battles and wars and. No guy can slow, slow down your pace, but your daughter was able to finally get you to, like, okay, pump the brakes. Uh, we need you to, like, uh, have some longevity in the sport. So I don't think that happened, like, you know, coincidentally, that this might actually have given you some more life to put on some better performances, more exciting performances, or just not that wear and tear that fighters go through that we don't see because we don't see your training camps and what you guys put yourselves through. Yeah, I mean... Definitely uh, added a lot of perspective. Definitely slowed me down. Um, in a good also, way. Yeah, in, in, in a great way. Such a, such a beautiful way. But um, yeah, uh, I'm, I, I'm still eager to find out kind of what Daddy Dober is going to bring, right? And we got this fight on Saturday. And so I'm like right there with you guys. Like I'm excited to see, you know, how it's going to come to fruition and, uh, and, and fights following. You know, I can't say that I, I know now with a daughter how it's going to play out because we've seen fighters have children and it just didn't work out for them, you know? And so I got to be able to use this in a positive way. And as of now, it's been extremely positive and yeah, longevity. I also think I age pretty well. You know, I look a lot better at 34 than I did at 24. I don't know if you have seen that, but that's pretty bad. Um, so, I mean, I think I can go on and be like a Stephen Thompson and try to do this in that 40 too. Who knows, though? Sounds good, man. Good luck to Daddy Dover on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Grant, well, number 10 ranking, main event. I mean, I know you've been working towards moments like this, bigger ones in play in the future, but, I mean, this is a big moment, right? What's, what's the feeling like for you as it's all playing out? Uh, it feels natural, man. Um, I, I keep saying this th throughout this whole week. Like, I've wanted to be a UFC world champion from day one. So if I want to be a UFC world champion, I have to know that these kind of moments are going to happen, and they're great, and I'm so happy that they're finally starting to get here, but this was supposed to happen. I'm supposed to be in a main event. I'm supposed to be uh, doing this kind of thing, and now I get to show the UFC that you can put me in a main event, and I can perform. I can go all five rounds if need be. This, everything that I've worked for is finally coming to fruition. Yeah, I like it. You know, obviously, you've been on this trajectory for a while, right? You get to this moment, this main event, um, the matchup may be a little bit surprising. Did you, I mean, were, were, did, you, did it make sense to you? Were you excited about it? What, what did you think? I mean, matchups don't make any sense to me anyways. And, and I'm not a real big, like, anything outside of the champion is just suggestion. The, the rankings change every single day. And if he beats me on Saturday night, then the matchmaking wasn't that weird, you know? Uh, I'm taking Bobby very, very seriously. I know how good he is, and I'm going to be honest with you. I think that a win over Bobby Green does more for my career than a couple of wins over some other guys in the top 15. I just think that he's got that big of a star power. Um, he's that big of a veteran, and I'm expecting the best Bobby Green on Saturday night. Nice, well said. Uh, I think most people that are breaking down the fight are seeing it as a clash of styles, right? I mean, he's known as a striker. You're known as a great grappler. I mean, I don't want to oversimplify things, but, I mean, is that kind of what you see as well? Uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit like, I know you're not, but it is a little bit oversimplifying it because he can wrestle. He had a very good wrestling background, and we've seen in his past fight, even in his last fight, uh, he was out wrestling Tony Ferguson. So taking him down, he's not going to be blown out of the water on the ground. If I can't get the takedown, I'm not going to be blown out of the water striking. We're both very good in each other's strengths, but that's what makes this fight so, so much fun. Who is going to be able to dictate what happens in this fight? You mentioned the possibility of like proving you can go five rounds if need be. Is there any slight part of you that like 
wants to go five rounds, like just to get the experience. I know that almost sounds bad to say that ahead of a fight, right? Because fans want to see finishes, but that's a big moment, right? To go a full five in the UFC. Right. Uh, I do not want to go five rounds, <laughs> but there will be positives if we do go five rounds and I can perform how I know I normally perform because for some reason, people think that I have bad cardio. I've had bad cardio in one single fight. One fight, I got tired, and all of a sudden, I'm a gasser for life. So if I were able to go five rounds with Bobby, keep the pace that I know I can keep, at least we would be able to shut those guys up. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. He sent a pretty direct message to you when he was here a little bit earlier, saying kind of to keep the same energy that you had while filming a promo, I believe. Uh, you know, saying some things that were like, oh, I'm ahead of you, like, look, here we are. And I haven't seen the promo exactly, but um, he said he wants to make sure you keep that same energy because he feels like it's his job to make a boring fighter seem exciting on Saturday night. Do you have any response to that message? What do you think when you hear that he said that? Man, you know, Bobby can't fool me. He's a good guy. He's a really nice guy, and uh, uh, he was really nice to me back when I was in high school. I don't know if you guys heard that story, but uh, he, I know that he's a nice guy, and I'm, I'm really glad that he's trying to sell this fight. So I appreciate it, Bobby. What's the story from high school? So my, other than watching UFC fights, my favorite thing to watch was um, uh, Bully Beatdown. And I messaged, I was a kid, I messaged every single Bully Beatdown guy, and I just wanted to know, is it all scripted? Or is it, like, is it a real thing? Obviously, like... Some of it's scripted, but is the fight like real? Do you actually fight somebody? The only person that reached back out to me was Bobby Green. He reached out to me and he said, yeah, it, it's real, man. Like I got to beat up a kid. And I was like, dude, that's so cool. And then he, he had something nice to say about like, you know, keep, keep working for it. I, I can't remember totally. This was like almost 10 years ago. So uh, I know Bobby Green is a nice guy, but I appreciate him trying to sell the fight. A great story. Last thing for me, you mentioned the trajectory, the ultimate goal, right? And you even said, I think maybe this win gives me more than some of the other guys around would give me. So where do you go with this? I know you said anything from a championship doesn't matter. It's just kind of a suggestion. But do you see the path? Do you see the names? Do you see, you know, the number of fights it'll take for you to get there? Right now, the only thing that matters is getting through Bobby Green, because if I lose to Bobby Green on Saturday night, all of that goes away. Not forever, but it goes away for a while. So the biggest thing for me is just to stay focused, Focus on, on beating Bobby Green and doing what I know I can do. Um, after that, we will have some names, but like I said before, I, I come up with names that I'm going to call out, but they're for different scenarios. If I go out and win a split decision, I'm not going to be calling for Islam Makhachev. If I go out and dominate, if I'm the first person to ever sub Bobby Green in a fight, then we can start talking about the bigger names. I've got three names in mind. We'll see how the fight plays out. Hey, Grant. Um I remember you saying that uh, you wanted your nickname to be King, right? And now you're fighting the King. So it's just, it's just kind of weird how it all kind of sh shaped up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like a TV show, you know? Like, the, the whole MMA community is like one big Tiger King TV show. It's just amazing if you step back and look at it. Uh, I wanted my nickname to be King Grant Dawson. And before I was in the UFC, I, I said, no, I'm going to do KGD because there's already a King in the UFC, and that's Bobby Green. However, when I win the UFC World Championship, I will change my name to King Grant Dawson. Um, and then also, like, you know, Ricky Glenn's fighting on this card. He's the reason why you moved to ATT. It's, it's, just, it's just all kind of like, it's like this card's kind of like made for you, right? Yeah, it, it's nuts. Uh, Drew Dober, who was just in here, really good friend of mine, um, and we were just talking. He was at my amateur debut. Uh, Drew Dober, I'm talking, was at my amateur debut, my pro debut. Like, we've we've kind of grown up in the sport together, you know, and, and now he's on this card. He also fought Bobby Green. Like, it's just, the if I'm a conspiracy theorist, it's like all the red dots, like, just connecting. It, it's really kind of a cool card if you know the story behind every fighter on it. Uh, and that's one of your thoughts on the rematch between Islam and Charles, do you see the fight going the same way? Is it going to be a little different? Like, what are your thoughts on it? Short answer, Islam wins again. Long answer, it's a much more competitive fight this time. 99% of the uh, nerves um, going into a fight is the unknown. I don't know how strong this guy is. I don't know how fast this guy is. Charles knows all of that. Also, Charles has nothing to lose. He's going to go in against a guy that's already beaten him. He can do nothing but look better against Islam in this next fight. One more thing, Islam has looked mortal. Islam has looked like a, a real person against a 45er. So it, it kind of shows the division that yes, he's really good. Yes, he's the best in the world, but he is beatable. And there are guys out there that can beat him. And somebody like Charles Oliveira could get it done. 
would you be shocked if, if we read that he got a guillotine win? Like, he's got one of the best guillotines in the game. So I think Islam still wins, but it's a much more competitive fight. And finally, for me, I just want your thoughts on Gamrot's win. Obviously, the fight only went two rounds, but how do you, like, what do you think of his performance leading up to the, fin uh, the finish? I thought he had a great performance. I, 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 I hate to see people trashing on a guy like Gamrot. One, because he's such a good guy, and two, like, he's fighting the guys that nobody wants to fight. I've never seen anyone call out Fazeev or Armin Sarukian, and he called out both of them and beat both of them. And I think that he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. I think he's number six right now, if I'm not mistaken. He should be three or two. I, I really believe that. He's one of the best in the world, especially with the guys that he's beaten. Awesome. Thanks, Grant. Grant, over here. Um, you mentioned you have three potential names to call out. If the fight goes the exact way you want it to go, who is the first string out of those three picks? Dan Hooker. And who are the other two? Uh, Matt Favola. Oh, um, uh, Diego Fajera. Awesome. And, uh, I mean, obviously, talking about Gamrot, he was here not too long ago after his post-fight win. He mentioned that he'd like to see um, or Johnny Eblen, uh, American top team uh, teammate fighting the UFC. I mean, what, what's your take on that? Would you like to see him come uh, make the switch? Johnny Eblen is the best 185-pound fighter on planet Earth, and that is a hill that I will die on. I think that he beats all of them, and it's not even close. That dude is the best 85er on planet Earth. He walks through Izzy. I've seen him in Sean Spar. I know you're not supposed to talk about the gym, and I usually have a very strict rule about that, but I'm going to tell you right now that Johnny Eblen is the best 185-pound fighter on planet Earth today. Thank you. I, I, there, there's rumors. I don't know if this is true. There's rumors that Bellator is going under, and there's a very large part of me that hopes they do just so we can see Yaroslav and Johnny Eblen in the UFC. You think they'll both have belts around their waist? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, guys.